I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Niles Main District Library Board of Trustees to order. It's 7 p.m. on Wednesday, September 20, 2017. And Dan, please take the roll. Karen. Here. Carolyn. Here. Dennis. Here. Diane. Here. Patty. Here. Linda. Here. And Tim gives you this place. Yeah, it's not being here to see to what exactly he said um, during our public comment here about the overwhelming majority of the funding that the library receives is from property taxes, uh, not food, beverage, and sales taxes. So we have the amended minutes in front of us. Do I have a motion to approve the amended minutes of the regular board meeting of August 16, 2017? So motion. Second. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Any discussion? All right, I'll move. Um, please take the roll. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Dave? Yes. And Linda? Yes. All right. We will now turn to the public comment part of our meeting. I know that some people would like to make a public comment and, and, and then leave the other places to go. That's fine. We can do that. Uh, because we have a few more people tonight making public comments than we do you, most nights, I'm just going to quickly review our public comment policy. Uh, it says board members will generally not respond to comments from speakers, so what that means is you can't really expect a response right here. You can make a comment. Um, the board president or other presiding office may respond as appropriate, for example, direct speakers to the appropriate staff member for assistance. Issues regarding possible action by the board may be added to a future agenda. Issues that need not be addressed by the administration will be duly noted. All public comments should be addressed to the board as a whole, and no comments should be addressed to individual members of the board, library staff, or other members of the public. Uh, we do have a time limit for um, public comment, I think, is five minutes. Can you keep track of that? All right. So, um, I think you see that some people have registered uh, for public comment uh, this evening. And the first one I have is uh, Joe McCool. Would you like to step up yes. to the microphone? Or let's see. Where's the microphone? No. I'll just talk it. No, Maybe I'm I can talk about it. Uh, I'm here to talk about taxes. It's quite obvious we've had people here complaining about their taxes and the tax bills. Uh, the tax burden of the library is more than it should be and much greater than it was historically. Uh, I talked to one of the members that was on the board in the 90s, uh, and he told me that the uh, number of employees was 60 around 1990, 30 full-time and 30 part-time. Right now we have 117 employees. Employment costs are a main driver of the tax burden. <coughs> the board agreed to work on the 2018 budget this fall. I recommend that every task and endeavor that the management has taken upon itself be analyzed. Maybe we're doing too much. Maybe we're doing things with little to show for it, or things with no way of measuring the outcome. The minimum goal of this board must be to cut taxes, and the only way we're going to be able to do that is to cut employment. And I recommend that we cut the employment by 10%, which would be about 11 persons. Uh, what we need to do, though, is have an immediate hiring freeze so we can have attrition, which would work toward covering some of those positions that are eliminated. Um, you, we're going to have to let a few people go because basically of economic reasons. And this happens in industry all the time. 
Uh, I'm sure somebody, somebody here has been unemployed for various reasons. And uh, right now the economy is fairly strong at this time. Letting go of employees is hard to do. What is in the real world, this happens all the time. And it's necessary for the survival of many businesses. The board, the board must make the decision to either mandate a maximum number of employees or cut out certain positions and activities. Uh, the director works with these people on a daily basis and would lose their confidence it was left up to her. The board must be the driver of sound economic management and must make many of these decisions. Running the library efficiently and economically and reducing the tax burden for homeowners, renters, and business will help the community prosper. Taxes are a taking of wealth and income. Young families and seniors are being affected most by this taking. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McCullough. All right, the next person on our list here is Kathy Nichols. Hi, my name is Kathy Nichols, and um, I've been a resident of NAS for 46 years. I use the library a lot, uh, mostly for children's services, and that's what I wanted to uh, compliment you on is your children's programming. I, I've used a lot of the children's programming. Um, I, I have was a teacher, and I got books from here, and then later on, I have a grandson. We, I have to, library story time, I take them for books, and uh, I think it's wonderful. And especially, I wanted to compliment you on that Phantom Fest that you put on. It was just marvelous. There were so many people there, the families of with all sorts of kids. It was exciting. Uh, I have pictures of it. I must have seen them. My grandson just loved it. I mean, we were there, and, and it was, there were so many Star Wars. Uh, it was just such a nice way to go, because you go to these really big ones, you have to pay, and then there's lines, and it's but this was just perfect, just perfect. I can't say enough about it. One of the highlights of our summer. So thank you very much for putting that on. I, I, I hope that you do that again uh, next year. And like I say, the children's programming has been, since I was a young mother all the way to a grandma, has been really great. It continues to be, to, to be great, and that, that's good. And also, I would hope, again, I use the library a lot. Sometimes I have specific books I want. So I hope you keep, keep uh, you know, like, I like to be in a conglomerate of libraries. I don't. Like, I want us to have just you know be all by ourselves because then I think that we miss out on some resources that we might. Because no library can have every book that you would ever need, but you could get it if you want if you just put a hold on it. And I've done that many times for certain books I wanted to get for my grandson or for myself. So that's about it for me. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. And now we have Alice Egan. Hi, my name is Alice Egan, and I've been living in Niles for about 54 years. I brought my children here for story time when they were little, so we took advantage of that. And I brought my grandchildren here for story time, but there were a lot of years in between when I was working, and I could not take advantage of very many of the programs. But now that I have more time, I have taken advantage of a lot of the programs at the Niles Library. And I really am enjoying this Shakespeare project. I've signed up for all of the all of the um, programs, and I enjoy the informational ones that you have um, about how to keep our brain going. And um, they had one here about Smokey the War Dog, and that was very interesting. There, there's just really been a lot of interesting programs that I have taken advantage of, and I have come here to see. And I get a lot of books, and a lot of them come from other libraries because they don't have them here. So, um, and I do go to other libraries. I have gone to the Morton Grove and the Glenview, maybe to take advantage of a couple of their programs. So I'm glad that we can do that. I'm glad we can share with other libraries. And I do enjoy the programs that you have. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Ms. Gloria, I'm probably going to... CSU. CSU. Everybody's afraid to say it. It's like it's spelled. I've been here over 50 years, and I love the library, and I uh, enjoy coming to the different things that you have. But I, I would, as they have said, hate to see you stop the intro library, because I go to, like Alice, Morton Grove, Skokie, Northbrook, Glenview, I mean, they have a lot of different things that aren't offered here, and they welcome everybody, even people from Chicago, 
and I think we should all be reciprocal. It's um, learning. That's all I want to say. I hope you won't stop it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, Can I the... just add one other thing? Mm -hmm. If you have a few more um, senior things, even just like movies, not senior movies, but movies that adults can go to, you used to have more. And I think you do have a wonderful children's, uh, it seems like the teen and the children's section is marvelous from what I read. I don't have anybody interested in that, but you know, if you can get the seniors up there a little bit too, it would be nice. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, okay, fine. Um, next on the agenda is the treasurer's report, but our treasurer... I have a quick question. So, based on all the comments we are reading here, uh, where would we go about getting something on the agenda based on some of the comments so we can get discussions about it? Uh, well, you can ask that something be placed on the agenda if you want. Okay. Um, in fact, at the end of the agenda tonight, if you want to mention it under a new business, okay. you can do that. All right. Um, other, other, whatever. Um, so, uh, the next item on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Our treasurer is not here tonight, though. He provided a written report. Um, Greg, I was just going to understand you that uh, Trustee Spadoni has asked you to review a few things with us. Is that correct? Yes. So, um, August is the uh, second month of our uh, fiscal year, one sixth of the way through the year's budget. So, uh, we're at 16.67% uh, or 16.7%. But, you know, as, as you know from experience, uh, the incomes and expenditures are rarely given in space. And even though we try to uh, account for that, yeah, on some line items, um, we're uh, operating at the whim of the town, for example, for, uh, for revenues. So, uh, if you look at the budget or at the uh, income statement as a whole, uh, many of the line items will, will be close to 16.7%. Uh, many of the line items will not be close to 16.7%. On the income statement on page 10, um, our revenues this month were, uh, were higher than budgeted, and uh, that's exactly what we're talking about in my comments for, uh, previously, uh, due, to the, due to the timing of the property tax receipts. So we got a little bit more, more money than we had planned this month and a little bit more money uh, year to date. Uh, we continue to wait for our per capita grant money uh, from last year. Uh, we're expecting uh, approximately $44,000. Um, and we do not know when, that's, when that will be coming in. Uh, salaries are under budget by $13,000 this month. Materials are about $32,000 higher than budget due primarily to subscription-based costs such as online databases and standing orders where we get uh, an added discount for, uh, for prepayment. Operating expenses, the uh, adult and juvenile uh, programming lines never exactly match monthly percentages uh, because most of the spending, uh, most of the, uh, the most expensive set of programs are in the summer during summer reading, um, but there are also future scheduling of payment and payment of programs that happen. So we are paying now for programs that will happen in the next 30, 60, or 90 days, and in one case, uh, maybe half a year. Um, general administrative, uh, one thing of note there is that we were able to collect about $3,500 for fees that which were uh, inappropriate, uh, char inappropriately charged to our accounts over the last two years. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, in fees we spend about $200 a month, so uh, this is a pretty significant uh, uh, return of money for us. And um, where does it show? Um, it's at page 12. Page, page 12. Okay. So if you look at page 12, we have a negative expense, mm -hmm. uh, which is money coming into the account. Okay. And then you get a funny look of percentage all the way to the right. right. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, total monthly expenditures are under budget by uh, approximately uh, $28,000. Um, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to uh, answer them or uh, give you the information at a later date. Um, can I ask a question? Um, I was actually wondering about summer reading. 
Can you explain how is, is summer reading like different age groups? Is that how we do that? I mean, is it how is it broken down, or how would you identify yeah. their yeah. type of program? Uh, well, summer reading is kind of an umbrella. We always have a theme every year. Mm -hmm. uh, this year's theme was reading by design, and so we have um, a reading incentive program where we are trying to encourage children to read um, so that they don't lose some of their reading ability over the summer, the summer slide. It actually is historically the very first library program is with summer reading. Back in the 1890s, children's librarians went out into the communities and started trying to get the kids to do their reading. So um, it's very big for us these days. We also do a teen component and an adult component. Um, but by far, most of the attendance and most of the expenses in the children's department. And they, so they do a variety of programs that kind of fall under the umbrella of the theme and just try to keep things going during the summer so that kids are, you know, have things to do and are not losing some of their skills. And how long does the summer reading program last? Like, is it all summer? It's, just so many weeks? It's so. roughly, it, it can be like, I don't know, I think this year, 10 weeks, and then it could be the uh, different. Like the teens usually runs a little bit later, but you generally think of it as June, July, and August. And so part of it falls into the end of the last fiscal year. So that means so we then are like saving money for that. So it looks like we're underspending for a while. And then at the very beginning of the new year, it looks like we're overspending because we're spending things for July and August. Right. And then another question about the breakdown. So for the younger children, excluding teens, is it by grade? Is it by age? How do you have the children grouped in the reading, summer reading groups? Um, but there are two different programs. There's one for the, the, the sort of more for the children that are being read to, and uh, it has very developmentally appropriate activities that go along with it. Patty's grandchildren have done so that. I'm preschool that's, that, Yeah, it's, ba it's birth through birth through the ability to read. So as yeah. soon as they can read, they usually oh, okay. like to be in, you know, yes. kids always like to be in the bigger kid one. So we were in so both programs this year. Yeah. And then after that, it's by age or by grade? I mean, is there like a third and fourth grade and a fifth, sixth grade? Oh, no, it's, well, I mean, particular programs will have different age levels. Like, um, I don't know, if there's a storyteller or something like that, and we'll say it's appropriate for this age to this age. But typically, we'll say ages for preschool, and then it starts being grades for the older kids. But okay. yeah, it gets broken out. So I think I'm confused with something else. I thought summer reading was, if you're this age, you stay in this group for the entire summer, and you just do it there. But what you're saying is you have programs, and then the students who fall under that category attend that. And you have stuff running all summer? Is that it? Can I address this to you a little bit? Sure. Because I did experience it. OK. For example, for the little one, they, do, they, have, they give them a sheet for each kid, depending on what program they're in. The little one was in the read to program. So that if there's any special activities that they have, they'll have the dates and what what time okay. and stuff. Right. And this is here. On the older one, which my one who's in first grade, he was a reader. So on there they said, okay, from this age to this age we have Legos. Uh, creating with Legos. From this age to this age, we have this. So it was divided up there according to grade levels, okay. to a certain degree. So that's how we end up with Yeah. Okay, sounds good. So yeah, they, could, they have a program and they think it's too old for uh, a third or a, a second grader. They'll say fourth on. Um, I get it. Okay. Oh, good. Well, thanks for all that help. I appreciate that explanation. Unless there's any other questions about the financial reports, we'll move on to payment of bills. So I would now like to entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses. Motion of, of $237,996.40. Payroll expenses of $265,438.36. And special reserve expenses of $11,607. A total monthly expense of five hundred fifteen thousand forty-one dollars and seventy-six cents. I still motion. <laughs> Second. All right. Any discussion? That uh, Diane, uh, please take the roll. Karen. Yes. Roland. No. Dennis. Yes. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. All right. Uh, now we'll go to the director's report, which I might note is probably the longest director's report I think I've ever seen. <laughs> it seems like uh, the library has been very busy uh, 
during the uh, chaos month. But if you'd like to put some of the highlights, sure, please do. Yeah, well, it made the fandom fest report a little bit longer than I normally would. So that took up some of the heads. Yeah, so it was very successful. We were delighted with our attendance, and um, it got just we're continuing to get a ton of compliments about it as we got tonight, which I certainly appreciate. Um, yeah, people just they kind of knocked their socks off, and so it was really wonderful to get all that uh, that love back from the community. Um, I have a, some statistics here that cover that, and a lot of uh, paper comments. Do you have um, additional statistics on the here? No, this is what I have here. No, I, I, not for discussion. Well, I mean, the, there are. They're in the statistic part of my report. You know, my report is always the verbal report, and then it, that ends with the trustee calendar, and then, well, so usually there's not anything after that, but this month there is. Then the monthly statistics, that's where you'll always find a list of the programs that were held with the attendance. Yeah, no, I know there's, <coughs> there's been some attendance there, but it just, you know, I was a little confused by what was listed here with the, the current statistics with, you know, you have enough uh, you got people count by the door, by the clicker, and then there's a door count. Yeah, I was wondering, what's the difference between those uh, Well, two? the door count there, we're always counting the number of people walking through the library doors, so that was the door count on that, but we also were trying to keep track of the people that uh, that came and, and said they were here for Phantom Fest. So we were trying to keep track, because, you know, some people were just here to use the library. Okay. But some people, like, like myself, could have gone out and come back. It, well, and so, that that's a continuous thing, you know. Yeah, there's so you never that, yeah. yeah, well, I go out, yeah, I, I went out, I looked in the parking lot, because sure. I, was, I was looking to see how many sure. residents. Yeah, were so you wouldn't have been counted twice with the clicker. The clicker number is the more accurate for the attendance for Fandom Fest. The door yeah. count it always has a little bit of the in and out. Plus, you might have, like, a staff member coming in the front door and walking out the back door, so you've missed the going out part, yeah. so it, it throws things off. And, and I didn't see, notice I mean, anything on the number of residents that were actually using it. So, you know, as, as I walked around the parking lot at a particular time, there were only, I think, 20 actual Nile stickers right. in all of the parking lots. Yeah, but you know that half the district doesn't have Nile stickers, right? All the people in the parking lot don't, 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 don't have stickers. So what kind of sticker would they have? They don't have stickers. They have no stickers. So they would have no sticker on their windshields. So the stickers that I saw there that were on the windshields yeah. were yeah. Yeah. show that. Yeah. No, they don't. Well, they're that is they're unincorporated. Yeah. So the Glenview stickers, so the display stickers, the stickers, so well, the Chicago okay. yes. stickers, Blinks. all of those Blinks. stickers Blinks. that I saw. Right. So I, I thought that there was a process as people were coming in and they were asking, are you not? Well, we were. And, 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 yeah, we didn't right. catch all of them that way, but we did have that in the press release that went out um, where I think it was, I believe it was I can't remember the exact number, but you know, oh. uh, Niles residents compared or Niles district residents. Uh, 60%. 60%, yeah. So, so. What, what happened subsequent to, them, uh, to the uh, patrons coming in is we had a giveaway. And yeah, it was, was, I came in and I was part of that giveaway. I said, I'll hang out of the bag. Okay. <laughs> and as they were giving those bags away that were yeah. full of... Uh, different things from uh, from some of the vendors. Uh, there was a question, and the question was, where are you from? Yeah. And uh, and they did that by tech mark, I believe. We did uh, 150, gave away 150 bags or so. Yeah. And 60% of that sample were from Niles. So if you, or from the district, I should say. Mm -hmm. OK? And um, if, you, if you use that and just you know, project it to the rest of the population. Mm -hmm. The rest of the pop, you know, the yeah. entire thing was contended by 60%. That's pretty Not convenient. necessarily. <laughs> I, I wouldn't use that as a... As a because when I came in here... Statistical sampling you know techniques uh, like usually, um, uh, usually take the sample that's uh, far smaller and the uh, conclusions are far more dramatic. But nevertheless... Nevertheless, uh, I, mean, I didn't see the, the statistics listed here, no, unless have, they're in the back. I did grab that, yeah. yeah, but it was in the press release. And because, then, plus, 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 you know, there were also many cards clogged over at Culver School. Yeah, and I went over there, and I didn't want to take a sample from there, because I realized that some people were over on that lot, they were playing in the field on the other side. So I figured, well, I can't really use a sample out of there, say, well, who's who's in that lot, and then pull it over into ours. Actually, so I, I took a sample from what, there. So, so anyway, so I based, walked. 
based off of I'm glad you did. I walked over, so my car wasn't even in the line. Right. Right. So, Isn't it wonderful just, that we have attracted our whole community and community surrounding. I, I, I to think an it's event terrific. where everyone was happy. It yeah. was a fun time. So, for so I, I, I think it's out. terrific, but if you look yeah. at the next thing for CMAP report, the display says, oh, we, we'd love to have additional things happen in the library, but we wouldn't want to see taxes go up as a result of that. So people don't, well, you know, it's nice that you're going to have that many people come in here, but you have to remember that there's taxes involved. With, with it as a result oh, of, of that. So you've got 118 people. There's always something. Yeah. And, and, and always as a result of that, you know, you got to kind of understand, uh, you know, you see the uproar going on about the, the sugar tax. I'm there's telling no, you, there's, people there's are tired of it. There's still up there. No, it is. It, it's not neither here or there. Yeah. Don't brush it off. It's not. Well, people are upset. People are upset with their tax. Well, no, you're saying it's neither here or there. I'm saying that there's a real issue with people concerned about tax levels. That period. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if we can bring Can I ask a question well, about the clicker? I have a question about this specific thing. As soon as she starts, this door count clicker, is it an automatic? Is someone holding oh, it? Somebody's holding it. Oh, I didn't notice. Okay, I'm like, do you walk in and they see you? Okay, okay. yeah. So, I mean, there is, there is an automatic clicker on the door. At the you know the security gates as you come in there is something that's automatically that's the bigger number oh, that, that's okay. going all the time that's where I we get our know. dark count every day. Interesting. And, okay. and, and I agree, it's great to have these items, these things, and there's great things that I would like to have in my house. And, and uh, based on my budget, based on my budget, I do those things. And and I'm telling you, we have a lot of programs. Nice programs. I love the program. I came here. I thought it was a terrific thing. But you know, you got to pay for that, and we didn't charge for it. And and as a result, we had staff here working and taking care of things. Yeah, can I just say okay. something now? For one thing, we can't micromanage. We give them a budget, and they work within the budget, and they're they're expected not to go over it. So as long as they're within the budget, we really have. Not really anything. If they go over the budget, we have to, we can really talk about this. But yeah. they are within their budget. We really kudos to the staff and kudos to bringing the community in. I, I, I think. All right, let's let's bring the discussion back to where we are in the agenda. Thank and you. And then this is just a section where our director is going over the report. If there are specific questions about the report, this is a good time to ask it. But we're talking about policy matters that really should be later on the agenda. So. Um, in terms okay. of the report, a couple more things. Yeah, okay. um, Dennis mentioned the CMAP report, which I think is very interesting and that is going to be a great deal of information for us. And we, you know, there's a lot to learn about people that live a little bit further away from the library. Um, I thought it was very interesting to realize that all of these people that live in an unincorporated area, uh, they have an address in Des Plaines or an address in Glenview, but they don't. They have no connection to that other than the fact that the post office assigned them those cities as their addresses. They, so they might very well be moving in thinking they've moved to Des Plaines, but actually they haven't. Um, but our library is the only library for those areas. But again, they, they say they have a, a great interest in improved library services, but nay nay on the taxes. Well, that's, and everybody, <laughs> so, well, nobody wants to increase taxes, but, yeah. you know, they're, they are working on the visioning part of the plan now, and we'll see what comes out of that. Um, I wanted to point out a particular um, a picture here from one of the classes that they taught on page 35. I just thought this was so cute that somebody was able to make uh, a design to go on their mailbox. They designed it and created it in our creative studio and program and put it on their mailbox and I thought it turned out That's fantastic cool. looking. When I yeah. saw that I thought, man, okay. is that cool. That is really neat that we can enable people to do things like that. And then I also wanted to point out on page um, 37, we've been collecting the interesting paper comments and questions. And so the staff, if they hit something that's a, a little bit out of 37. Oh, because I missed the part about the Oakton community. Uh, college partnering, partnering with the library. I wasn't sure what that was. Uh, well, we have been for you know, off and on for several years. We have ESL or uh, literacy classes here that Oakton actually does the teaching, and we provide the space and the tables and everything. And, so, and why don't they do it at Oakton? Uh, they well, do. They do. They yeah. do. So, but we do it over here as well. Yeah. We give them a room to do it. And we have, it 
a big part of the renovation was providing meeting rooms for the community. This is a meeting room. This is what meeting room right. space. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to understand because I wasn't sure. here last year. I wasn't here. To, right. You know, yeah, no, and we're delighted with the uh, attendance. We actually I thought, thought it was going to go way down. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, and then I saw that volunteers are doing the actual teaching for the most part. Yeah. So nobody gets charged. Uh, people that go to the classes, they don't pay a fee. They buy their books. They buy their books. They don't pay a fee. And Oakton doesn't pay a fee to us for anything. Yeah. Using, it's uh, a partnership. We, we are partners with Oakton. Uh, page 37, I, I just wanted to highlight this little story that said uh, that one of the staff members worked with an Arabic speaker who had asked mm -hmm. uh, for translation of a letter and that Judy found somebody at the Royal Embassy of Saudi Arabia in Washington, D.C. to help that person write a letter to their congressperson. And I thought that is such totally a great cool. example of the kinds of ways that people help in the community. Um, I also just wanted to mention that we did complete our uh, annual report for the state of Illinois, which, as always, was running a marathon, but we got it done. Um, the, I, I am a member of the Arts and Culture Council uh, representing the library, and, and the, the uh, Niles Board of Trustees did approve our plan last week. So uh, we will, the first thing that we're going to be tackling is looking for places in Niles for public art. So that's coming up. Um, and then, let's see, uh, I think that's all I have. Um, I wanted to ask about this article in here, the Wired Library. Yes, that was um, written by Susan Wolf here. This is great. So is this, I, I don't know much about this publication, the Wired Library, what is it? So it's just the columns called the Wired Library. Okay. the actual journal is called um, Public Libraries. Okay. And it's, um, uh, published by the Public Library Association. It is their magazine that we get it. Okay. So I have, it comes out uh, six times a year. Is that for is that for all, all of my libraries? That, um, so you have to be a member okay. of the PLA to get it. Okay. Um, but it's really great. It's got articles written by you know, different professionals in the, um, different professionals, library professionals about topics that are relevant. So, okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, I was really pleased to see all the mentioned here yeah. and the program. It's, it's, and I was going to say, the stuff you've got pictured there, that's the stuff you brought to the one meeting, isn't it? Some of that? Some of that, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I gave the presentation with that gentleman at the National Conference, and we kind of turned our presentation into an article. Okay. Nice. Right. That's cool. So this particular publication, is this just down on Is this stationary? It's part of ALA. It's ALA. I should mention also that Carolyn had asked for a fuller report on the passport service, and so that is part of the director's report as well, mm -hmm. along with the document that they sent us for from the Thank you, ladies. Bye. Thank you. Bye. So, um, so I have a question about right. the Fandom Fest report. What you just gave us is what is your typical report after we have an event? Um, the committees have met, they have, that committee has met, they have reviewed how the day went, they have made notes for next year, uh, just kind of trying to make sure that they don't forget anything, mm -hmm. and um, and then we have, you know, the statistics. Um, well, I would like to see a report of that event. Well, we didn't, uh, they didn't, I don't require that, explains, that they were written. Well, as, as a trustee, and as a um, an issue with programs in this library where we cannot identify costs or what we do or, or labor hours. We need to rethink each event. We need to be able to prove that we've spent this much on staffing time, what we bought, and based on who came, was it successful? How could we not take the time to just put that type of report together? Well, oh, I think we do have quite a bit of Because it says it was $5 per person. Yeah. Well, right. Fandom Fest paid $5 per person. It was in our... So my question program. is, based on the staff, based on whoever was hired to participate at this event, based on the giveaways, what was the total cost for Fandom Fest? That's what Five I have to ask. It's right here, page 32. It costs how much in staff time? I, I don't care, what, I, you know, yeah. it's a great general statement. How much did it cost us in staff time? Who was hired to perform or to entertain whom? 
Why can't we have those specific well, ones? Honestly, I think that's something you'd have to bring to the table. We'd all have to vote on it if we want them to actually put that you know what? in. It's because because you know what? This board needs to realize what its responsibility is. It's not, it's not a girls' night out with a couple of guys sitting here, and we get to choose. We have been elected by the taxpayers. It is our responsibility to have accountability for the things we do. This library obviously has never had to provide any any substantiation of anything they do. What is so hard? You don't know all the people that you had on staff for that event to come up with that Look, total? Carolyn, you know, if we all want the staff to provide that information, we can vote on that and direct them to. But it's not don't it's a requirement. Me, it's but a it's not a requirement. It's not a requirement. Every we penny never, spent we in this not library is. We them to do that. If we ask the staff to do that, we can expect them to do that. But we didn't ask for that ahead of time. The, the problem I'm seeing, I'm not asking to change. If we want to do it, we can ask them to do it. But you and can't criticize them to, for doing okay. something. Well, let me criticize this board. Let me criticize this board because I need to get my statement out, okay? Well, it is our responsibility to expect detailed reports with costs. I'm, I'm pretty shocked that none of these department heads have any type of records. And, that, and that's just natural. Please let me finish. Well, you're making all kinds of inaccurate statements. Okay, let me finish. We can't figure out how much staff is used to produce certain tasks. We have no idea what it costs for the um, books that we sell. We have no idea about what we're doing with deliveries to different locations. We can't get a report, a basic report. It's done all over the world when you have an event. Right, Carolyn, at the end of the meeting. And the cost, and I'm not finished, the cost associated with all of these events is a secret. It cannot continue to be a secret. At the end of the year, you look at a budget with even less details, and you increase the budget by $1 million, and you think that's satisfactory? All right, Carolyn, at the end of this meeting, if you wish to, under the other section, make a motion as to exactly what type of information you want in this report. There is some information in there. It's apparently not the information you want. But if you want other pieces of information, you can make a motion as to whether or not the staff should gather that data. In which case, we'll, 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 make, we'll make a uh, vote on it. We'll, we'll vote on it. And then we'll direct the staff to gather that okay. information. Unfortunately, it's just a crap shoot. None of you are interested in valid information. But I can't understand how you don't feel obligated to the taxpayers. Everything's too much work. Everything is, is an argument. Why can't we expect that from all the money we make? Fine. You can make any motion you want at the end of the meeting as to what, if anything, you specifically you want in terms of a report. Right. Okay, Actually, I don't think she can because uh, you can't vote on she, anything. She can make a motion, but we'd have to table it into... Exactly, it could be on the... But we can certainly discuss it. We can discuss yes. it. Perhaps. And then before we pass the director's report, my question about... We'll pass the director's report. Uh, if that's what you're talking about in terms of a motion. If you have a question about it, what is your specific question? Before we move past the director's report, I had another question. What is it was question? regarding um, the passport agency information. Um, last month, Greg Fritz um, informed us that he was training eight to ten people, and um, he gave us a few details. Um, you mentioned that you would provide us with a, a report with specific details. I asked you in my email to also include whatever the instructions are from the passport agency telling us what the parameters are. Do we have to have so many people? What are the hours? And I don't think that's highly confidential and sensitive. If he's going to create a passport agency based on parameters given to him by the government, I just want to know what they are so we can understand why he's making the decisions he's making. Um, can I please say something? So yes, is that yes, a problem? So um, from when I read this, which I read the whole thing because I know you asked for this, what I read out of this was until they start and see what kind of numbers they get, the people are going to be at the one desk. And then as they're needed, they'll be moved. And then they'll consider and figure out how they're going to staff it. Since at this point, they have no idea what kind of volume 
they're, they're, they don't really get the numbers. If I read this correctly, did I read it correctly? Yes. Well, Thank I you. believe you um, reached out to other people who are more experienced in this, and I think based on the information you'd be given from them, you'd be able to come up with a plan. You know, this library tends to just jump into something and then just move along and whatever happens, happens. I mean, there are other facilities doing this exact same thing. With less people than you plan on using. I think, Carolyn, you would have to agree that the traffic at the Niles Post Office might be very different from the traffic at a neighborhood office in Chicago. It's not apples to apples. And it's different at different times of year. So all we're going to be able to do is see how it goes for this library and plan accordingly. But it is a revenue source. that We're not talking about spending money. We're talking about making money. Well, you make money if you plan it correctly. And I wasn't talking about the library. Main Township Assessor's Office has a passport agency. They utilize three full-time people who have three very busy full-time jobs. And their income will be close to what you plan on making. But you think you need 8 to 10 people. No, no, no. We're open 70 hours a week. Passport service is going to be available for most of those hours. Mm -hmm. And all of those people will have other responsibilities, will continue to have the responsibilities that they have now. Exactly. But some of their job will be taking shifts on the passport desk. Well, I was just concerned about how you planned on breaking down those um, staff hours to see why you needed 10 people. I thought maybe that it, would which be the It's more an issue of we have to be covered 70 hours a week, right? And they're covered Many 40, be, so that would be a total of six if you double it. Yeah, if I may, uh, many of the people, uh, practically all of the people that are being trained are part-time. They're not full-time. Part-time how many hours? Uh, less than 20 hours a week. Well, I. I guess what I would think is they may be 20 hours, but your employees, you should be able to choose employees that comprise an entire day. I mean, there has to be some logic to this. Sure. There is logic to it. So, I don't so I'm trying to figure out why you need so many more people. If I double the hours at time. If I what if so people are sick or on vacation? And so is and so is full time is also the um, employees who work at the main me. township. It's <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is if it takes three people for 40 hours, then it should take six for 70. So we have, a, we have turnover. I know, we all do. But I'm saying if we could try, instead of running away with costs, if we could start with a structured plan, instead of we'll see how it goes, we do that for everything. We yeah. have not hired anyone for this at this time. We are taking oh, our so we, have plenty of, we have plenty of employees. We have plenty she of said, employees. She just said we have not hired anyone. Well, you don't need to, although I know you're thinking about it. You made that. Well, I, that's really not, that's really not fair. That's so really not fair. Which is really unfair. No, she it is really, really unfair. We may need Carolyn, someone full time. You really need to you know, step back and not put these assumptions on the table, it's really not I'm not assuming, I'm just stating a fact. That's okay. what she told us. Really she hopes to see it be successful, really and we would need to hire probably full time. Carolyn, I'm not either of them, but I can tell you, for them, I feel offended. Because you're basically saying they're idiots, they can't do anything. Well, I'll be honest with you, That's all of the, the information we receive yeah. is so fragmented. Is so fragmented. This is just not what I'm accustomed to. I, I, I think it, at some point we're going to get some type of an understanding of how many hours are going to be needed. Because I know at places like the main township, I know the places at uh, the post office, they aren't running 70 hours. So, so again, <clears throat> because it'll cost, it'll, it'll require people to man that for 70 hours. At some point you have to understand what's your cost for running that project is. So if you want to run 70 hours, you're going to have to run so many people against those 70 hours. So you have to say, well, here's what my budget is for that project. Because at the end, somebody says, well, we want to raise the tax levy. We're going to have to decide what we can keep and what we can cut back on. And I, I think that's where people are going. And right now, we don't have that understanding of how long we're going to have to keep it open. So I understand that. It makes sense. Well, we have a, we, we ask to be available. For the hours that 
the Department of the State Department that's available. Oh, so it's right it's now, so how how so it it right now we promised that it would be available about fifty five hours a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we don't you know we don't start right away in the morning. Um, we um, actually uh, yeah, yeah, I think that'd be fine. Um, we don't start right away in, in the morning. We cut it off uh, prior to close so that we can wrap up. Yeah, no, it makes and, sense. And yeah. put the packages together. They do that in Maine Township. I but think. the service is available. So what that means is that we have to we have to cover um, 55 hours for training people. It doesn't mean that they're going to be doing passports. It means that they're available to do passports should somebody walk in. Mm -hmm. Each passport application should take uh, 15 minutes, according to statistics that we looked at. Yeah, I don't know enough about passports to tell you all here. That's how I'm Yeah, so now you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so for every 15 minutes that somebody is sitting at that desk, they're making $25 for the library. If they're doing a, a, a new yeah. passport. If they're, right. doing if they're doing a, a renewal, they get nothing. They get nothing, but renewals can be mailed in. So who in their right who in their right mind who has a passport that's expired doesn't want to take the form, slap it together, send it out. I don't know, I don't do passports. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So you know. Yeah, well no, I don't have the statistics. So I don't go over to the post office and say, Hey, how many renewals you get, how many new passports do you get? So I would do that and get statistics to fully understand who wouldn't be smart enough to slap a, a stamp on something and send it in. Nobody in their right mind, trust me. What? We'll go to there's the, a lot of people we'll the, there's uh, a lot of people that passport window that the come in and I think uh, yeah, it might be a reference question of like how do I renew this? And you know, and then you would tell them and maybe they'll get a book in the meantime. You know, I mean it's still not bad yeah. thing, it's still a good thing got yeah. it in here, right? So as you know from being in business, yeah. the most difficult thing that you can do um, in the life cycle of a business is accurately predict the rental. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, so, I, would, I would base it off of, you know, other factual data that I pull in from other locations. Well, what, what is difficult for us to gather because um, of the uh, uh, operating footing of the, of the uh, post office yeah. is how many people they turn away, yeah. which would give us uh, an yeah. idea of yeah. unsatisfied demand. Yeah. I have no so, argument with the, the passport thing. I'm just, yeah. I'm just saying that there has to be an understanding of, you know, what, what are you doing? You know, so, so you say, yeah, okay, yeah. so you have, we have a better understanding. There's 55 hours. And based yes. off that 55 you, hours, it'll fluctuate until you find out what you're going to be doing. You know, it, maybe it doesn't happen in 55 hours. It, you know, maybe next year. I, I don't know if you have to renew every year or not. Now, there was a, uh, a memorandum that we put in front of the board in a previous meeting. Which, which estimated that we would do a thousand passports in the first year. Most of them concentrated in the uh, first uh, two to three months of the year, which is when people are planning to do their summer vacations and, and so forth. It yeah. might take up to two months, depending on how busy the passports to get your passport in. So they have to allow the time. When you leave the country, uh, your passport has to be good six months beyond your. Mm -hmm. travel day, just in case. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a lot of people come to that realization as they're, you know, trying to buy tickets and they're refused mm -hmm. and so forth, and then, yeah. and then they, and then there's a big rush. There are people that have, yeah. you know, had passports all the time, and maybe they're from another country, and yeah. you know, view that as a vital link. So we plan to be busy if in that yeah. in that period of time. Yeah. We don't know how fast it'll ramp up and get us to that point. If by some uh, by some miracle. We have 220 passport applications a week. We'll have to have some people back there, or we'll have to have somebody's time there. Yeah. You know, taking those applications. Um, if you if you hire uh, a clerk, um, I believe our, our clerks are being paid in the in the neighborhood of fourteen dollars an hour. Yeah. Or if you split it into quarter hours, yeah. uh, you can do that math. Yeah, I, I know. Okay. I know in other 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 government areas, they are pushing back on hiring full time people. So I think we should keep that in mind as we go forward. If we have a big, large, we understand the dynamics in, of employment. 
and, and, and so do the so do the tax lawyers. They, they, yeah. need, they fully understand that tax. We understand the dynamics of it. Yeah, I'm and, glad you do. And the benefits because the associated. people over at Maine understood the, it too, and they wanted to hire somebody on full time, and they got a big no. From the board. I can tell you we understand the dynamics of the point. You talk about it all. Okay. So um, let's wrap up. Do we have any communications? Excuse me, did we go past patron suggestions? That's communications. I just noticed. Okay, sorry. I noticed something in there that caught my eye. Okay. Well, I did, the only thing that I was going to mention is that ahead. I have many compliments um, for many people on the digital services department, and in particular, there's a young man who works, he, uh, part in digital services and part as our webmaster named Matthew, and you all have seen month after month that we can. All these compliments from Matthew, and so I ran into him yesterday as we were walking out together, and I said to him, this is on page 57, where you get the comments. And I said, boy, I'm loving getting all these compliments about you. And he says, well, I don't, I don't really understand it. I feel like I'm just doing my job, and I'm just really glad to make people's lives better when I help them with their job applications and things like that. And I just thought, that's what it is all about. I'm really happy with that. So that was the main thing I wanted to say here. All right, thank you. I noticed a parent was, I guess, frustration is the title. She said there was a child. And, uh, 56, an unattended child in the library. Yeah. Well, we do have an that's uh, against the policy and people are not allowed to leave their children unattended. So, you know, and so if a child's in the library or children are in the library without adults, what happens? Well, they would, they would uh, get whatever contact information they had and they would call the adult if they couldn't find one, they would call the police. So the patron didn't observe that somebody was with the child, but the children's staff would always go over to the child and make sure that there was an adult, or that our, I think our policy is, is it 14 that they have to be to be a supervisor? To be a super, a super, in a supervisory role without an adult in the building. Yeah. They can watch number six. Yes. Yeah. So, and, um, you know, and the reason I want to bring, I, I, it caught my eyes, I've been hearing a lot of complaints from the neighbors they see parents dropping their kids off, young kids, and coming into the library. So I was going to ask you, what's the age for a young child to be unattended? Eight. An eight-year-old can be walking around the library alone? That's on your policy, man. I know. I the saw that. Child Is that that's, it hasn't changed? Um, no. Because I think a minor at eight years old can't be left alone. Well, I mean, I believe in the state of Illinois, the year is at like 13. It is. So, yeah. But we allow eight-year-olds unattended to be in our library. It's, that's a board policy. If you guys want to change it, you can change it. I think that's a little frightening. Didn't we just have a situation with a young girl? Um, not too long ago, you sent us an email. I don't even know if she was with a, an adult. The, the young oh, girl. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, actually, it was not a young girl. It was, it was more like a, a teenager. I think even over 18. Okay, I think, I think this is something we should review because I don't think we want parents dropping their young children off. I'm well, supervised. I mean, um, hey, Erin, would you like to speak to how you handle that? Sure. sure. So there, there is a baseline age, but they do have to be able to um, comply with their behavioral expectations. They also have to know how to reach home, and if there's any, you know, Ill, if there's any misbehavior or if there's that that we perceive any um, like child feeling there that they don't know what's happening then we do reach out to the parents. And we also have it printed so we can hand it to people. We do have people come quite regularly and say, you know, I'd like to, is it okay, is my child, uh, is, it, is it okay if my child plays over here? I want to run to the grocery store. And we say, oh, how, how old is your little one? Um, and if they're old enough, and, and we say, do they know how to get a hold of you? Should they meet you? And is, is that something that your child's comfortable with? And according to board policy, that's, um, that's how we do it. We have, we have it printed, so if anyone is ever concerned or upset, we can. Well, that's, give them that's evidence certainly of your oversight. Mm -hmm. okay. My only concern is I think it's too young for someone to be left alone. So now our staff is like a daycare center, responsible for someone else's children. That's that's, we, that's we a half day responsibility. We don't act in local parentis. We're not the schools. It's not our it's not our obligation to babysit anyone. But if as they, soon as a parent asks you, "Can I leave my child?" 
Yeah, well, they're a different question. Well, if they're if they're what they're asking is, are they old enough to be here by themselves? And the answer works, then that. And, and if their if their child is okay with that. I think we should address leaving an eight year old in the library without an adult or with. I think it's what fourteen you're uh, considered an. Um, you can be left alone. But I think to have eight-year-old children being dropped off, that's problematic. And so it is true. So my neighbors who are complaining to me for months, which I never, I just caught this, and that's what made me question it. It's true. Right? Well, I think so that's something we, we should we consider. We may have some children coming over from Cutter, right, right. school sure. to do homework, right? Absolutely. They right. And does the staff help them with projects that they might be working on? Right. So they come here directly after school, doing homework. Yeah. Really being yeah. babysat, but you may be helping them with homework, correct? Helping or them the computer, helping them look things up, helping them print their homework, yeah. um, especially being book recommendations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I can check with the other libraries and find out what their unattended child limit is. I can really, I'm happy to do that. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. And do you have a general feel of how the faculty, I mean, no, faculty, but the staff feels <laughs> about this? About the kids, I mean, the, and that do age. the staff complain or do they? I don't think the staff is complaining uh, in that if there's if there's a behavioral issue, we're addressing that behavior, not necessarily. Uh, I mean, we're, we're happy to have kids walking in the door. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of them come in, they settle in, they head out and have a snack, they come back, they sit down and engage with computers or in the study room or with a book. And so for the most part you don't see as many behavior, that many behavior for the most part. Well, I, I don't think there's a rampant behavioral issue in our space. Mm -hmm. It's a safe thing in our home. Mm -hmm. not on the street. It is a pretty safe place to be. Yeah. Um, I guess those eight-year-olds could go home and sit quietly in their house by themselves, but here... No, legally they can't. So that's what I'm worried be, about. Can that, be here? that may be happening, though. That may be if, they're, if they're not allowed into the library, they mm -hmm. may in fact be going home to all country houses. So, okay. All right, let's 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 move on to um, various other reports. Uh, Friends of the Library. Um, I, I sent a prepared a letter to Chris Newsy. Did that letter go out? I'm inviting him to come to the meeting. He did not get any response, and he did not come to the last friends meeting. Okay. Right. When did it? When did it go out? Because I could follow up on it. Yeah, actually, you know, press. It was uh, before Labor Day. I thought. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember, remember it was like the last day or so. That I sent something. To yeah, because you know, as I mentioned in our last meeting, it just seems to make sense to have him come here now. Some some of the people aren't as familiar with the friends of the library as other folks are. It, it just seems to make sense to have him come here. Kind of give us, you know, give us an overview. I know you guys have all heard it before, so you don't need me. Right, like right. Yeah, but but you know, if I can, follow, I'll try following up with them because it, it just seems to make sense. You know, here's how here's how big the friends is. I don't know. They got ten people. They got five. They got two. You know, how many friends are there? You know, who's leading it? What's their objective? What do they want to do? How are they going to work with you guys? I, I have no understanding. So uh, I'll, I'll give him a call. I'll take that on as a task. So follow up if you don't mind. But you certainly can call him. I mean, if he doesn't yeah. want to come, he can't. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know what uh, what the, the issue is here, but I mm -hmm. sure would like to. You know, I, I think it would be a benefit to uh, okay. at least somebody, you know, to myself and some of the others. Are, you know. okay. I, I know so you guys have been dealing with them for a long time, but. Uh, uh, Okay. I'll, right. I'll take it on. I'll, 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 I will, uh, who, who would I get back to? Uh, you can call Susan and let her know if he's uh, interested in coming. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. And again, I, I think we, we wanted to have him have some type of an agenda rather than just have him come here and, you know, roll off. I think, you know, I'll, I'll ask if he can give, give, you know, a high level of what he wants to do. What do you think he can offer the library? Well, well just, just, you know, he, just some information. I, I think we need to have some basic information, you know, kind of structured from him rather than have him just walk into to, uh, to our meeting. Sure. Yeah. And, and if anybody's got any ideas, let me know. I, I'll well, I'd, I'd like to 
like to know, you know, what if any ideas do they have for raising funds for the library? Uh, I think that's their mission right. to mission. raise yeah. funds. Yeah. And mission. what if any plans do they have for doing that? Let's see what I'd be interested in knowing, I guess. Okay. All right. Um, legislative. Okay. Uh, Rails? Okay. All right. So, all right. under new business. New business. Do, um, we'll discuss this, but first we need a motion. Do we have a motion to award Charles McClellan a contract in the amount of uh, $9,100 for concrete repair work? Do have a motion? I guess. Okay. So we can discuss okay. it. Okay. All right, fine. <laughs> so, uh, uh, that sounds all obtuse. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we do have uh, some description of this in our packet along with some photographs of the uh, concrete work along the west and adjoining north walls um, and the condition of them. So we have um, bids from three contractors um, and we have a recommendation to go with one of the lowest spread bids that is Charles McQuillan uh, because of the completeness of his bid and the fact we had Good experience with this company in the past. So, are there uh, any comments, questions? Just to, you know, we, you know, the person for our you know, they had always said, you know, you get what you pay for. Uh, but not always. And I, I rely on you guys because you do involved with the bids. He's not uh, giving me anything less than, than the guy for 1100 um, and so, Okay. Yeah. No, so, they're comparable with the services and so yeah. Is, it, is there any thought, you know, because I, this looks like, this wall looks like my, part of my driveway, because uh, I use <laughs> I, uh, salt on it as well. So is, is there another type of salt we can use, or, or is this just something that, and, and, and you guys are the experts, I, I, I'm just, take no offense at my questions, I just, uh, uh, I, I just, uh, Age I, has, age has a little bit of a well. Age? For, and by putting that, that epoxy on there or whatever, that's going to help it. Right. Yeah, because I understand there's probably rebarb in there. Mm -hmm. just kinda They're going to talk to us about hanging out with them. Color it, whatever color you can choose. Okay. All right. Any other questions about that? So does that cover the, 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 the piece about the, the electrical and the damage on the sidewalk, or is that different? It's the same. It's all going to be all one. It's going to be the it's wall and the okay. Yeah, he's going to do the slab on the. Uh, so we side. get anybody's insurance to cover the damage? It was laying in a lot of work. Oh, they didn't see it. Of course not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Any other um, no additional questions? I'm asking for a roll call. Oh, Karen. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. 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 What we have here are uh, printers that are 12 years old and that have been replaced, so we need to do something with the, the old ones. Do we have some questions here about this? Or, Greg, did you want to say what are we no, thinking about? I think about you covered it. it. Hmm? I think you covered it. Okay. So they give them to a recycler and he, they crush them and we have no responsibility once they do. Yeah, I mean, it has to be uh, somebody that will dispose of them uh, responsibly. There's, I take it, no resale value? No, no, no. Do we have to pay uh, them to take them, or are they taking them for free? It's usually for free. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Well, then that's a plus. All right. Can I roll a call on that for the second? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Thanks for getting that done. Yes. Wait, wait. Did you get Diane? Yes. Yes. to the uh, next part of our agenda, or our team given a handout here.
this is our discussion to determine the amount of the 2017 and 2018 uh, tax levy. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, put together a short presentation to uh, to walk through uh, the uh, determination of the levy, give you some background information. Uh, first question uh, is, uh, you know, what does the property tax revenue really mean to us? Uh, the field the library on a standalone basis, 95% uh, of the total revenue of the library is uh, property taxes. Mm -hmm. Um, the balance, those little pie slices there, are um, replacement tax, which comes from the state, uh, our per capita uh, grant, which we get uh, annu annually, uh, interest, fines, lost books, um, copy fees, and then because this is based on the budget, uh, passports and uh, book sale are in there. But the key, the key thing to remember is that 95% of our revenue is uh, from property taxes. Uh, if you look at uh, similar entities, uh, Village of Niles, it has a similar um, uh, level of levy, uh, maybe a little bit less. Uh, only 11% of their revenue comes from uh, property taxes. And if you look at the Niles Park District, I believe their total levy, levy is about 3.8 or 3.9 million. Uh, that's, that comprises 52% of their uh, total revenue. So, um, if, just to go back and review the 2016 property tax levy for a moment, um, I don't know, um, I know that many people around the, around the table are familiar with the fact that we levy in one year and collect in the following year. Mm -hmm. um, Diana and, and uh, Dennis, I'm not sure how familiar, how familiar you are with that, but, you know, what happens is you declare the levy or file the levy in uh, the fall of the year, and then the following uh, the following calendar year, uh, the first installment in February with the second installment in August, uh, is, is how those taxes are uh, collected. Uh, that kind of gives us, a, a, in terms of budgeting, kind of gives us a split year. So the first half of the year is the existing levy. And the second half of the year is going to be the new levy because the first installment collected in February is the is the last half of our fiscal year. Okay, the 2016 levy was exactly the same as the 2015 levy. Uh, the final was six million seven eighteen four seventy four, and what they call the aggregate ex extension was six actually six million nine twenty three five hundred. Now what the uh, what the county does is it adds uh, roughly three percent for uh, what they call loss and costs uh, uh, to our uh, final levy because some people surprisingly don't pay and uh, you know and it, or um, what also happens is after the levy is approved and established they're able to get a reduction through the court system uh, or other protest uh, uh, methods that are available to them. So what what the county does is it actually inflates our levy to $6.9 million. Okay. So what the board, what the board is uh, uh, looking to do is to set the 2017 levy, which will be collected in 2018. So here's, a, here's an interesting question. Are library taxes going up? The answer is no. Uh, 2015 and 2016 are exactly the same. But some neighbors, uh, and, we've had, and we've heard them in public comment, have articulated uh, their position that their tax bill for the library is higher this year than it was the previous year. So uh, how could that happen? Um, there are many, many factors that affect how much an individual property is taxed. Okay. Not only the levy amount, okay, we levy an amount, we don't levy a tax rate, we levy an amount and the county and the county makes that a rate. 
Um, but what the county also does is it runs around and looks at properties, and every three years, uh, what they call a triennial reassessment, they reassess the properties. So this year, your property might have an assessed valuation of uh, $45,000, and they, that's what it is for three years, and then they come by and they reassess your property, and now it's $55,000. Uh, the another thing that uh, affects uh, individual property rates is exemptions. You get you get a homeowner's exemption if you're living in the house, okay, and it's usually six or seven hundred dollars off of your tax bill. You also get you also get an exemption uh, for being a senior citizen. So if you're over 65, you get another exemption, which is another six or seven hundred dollars off. <laughs> but I think the people here, you know, that are over 65 should check their, tax, check their tax bills. You can actually do it online at the Cook County Clerk, uh, Cook County Clerk dot, uh, might be gov or, or com, I can't remember. But if you start, if you search on Cook County Clerk, it'll, it'll take you there and you'll be able to see exactly what uh, exemptions are being attached to your property. There's also, uh, the state also steps in and creates something called an equalization factor. And then that's applied to your property. So it has kind of a multiplicative event, uh, kind of a multiplicative uh, effect. Uh, if, you know, if, you're, if your assessed valuation has gone up, it'll go up even higher once the equalization factor is applied to it. So in, in some cases, you know, we're going to have properties side by side identical properties, identical condition, but taxed much differently. Sure. And they're going to be taxed differently because I was smart and I protested my assessed valuation. And instead of it going from 45000 to 55000 it only went up to 46000 What if you were smart when you were turned down? Well, you keep trying. You keep trying. Exactly. You know, I mean, exactly. you have to find, you know, there are, there are there are firms that do it. And, and well, no, I I, yeah. I I I know all about it because yeah. we go through it all the time. Yeah. And and then so you're paying money to be smart to get it reduced, but you're still paying something to get it done. Um, you could do it yourself. Yeah. Well, yeah. You could also share it. I know it it's myself. the mayor that is in the uh, I know. I I went through yeah. it and uh, yeah. I I got the. Uh, I got yeah. this. One the time I got it. Oh, no. I, I won't run over to the camera. The one, the, no, the one time I got it, the, the last time I didn't. So anyway, we can stay on track. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, you know, that's you know that's the reason. Um, if your assessed valuation is higher than mine given identical properties, your tax bill is going to be higher because it's a rate that's applied to the assessed valuation. So, what are the consider some of the considerations for the uh, 2017 money? Um, our annual growth rate in expenditures is 2.7 percent. It has been at that for a long time. Uh, that's driven uh, principally by a 3 percent increase in uh, Sal in salaries, um, and it's modified to some degree uh, downward by uh, some of the lower ex uh, experience we have in lower uh, uh, spending in other areas. Uh, the special revenue funds are running out of money. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a, a deficit in the building and site fund. Um, and a couple of comments about that. When I started three or four years ago, there was uh, $1.1 million in all the special reserve funds. And we, and we purposefully lowered the taxes uh, that we were collecting for those funds to deplete them. The, the thing about special re special revenue funds is that if you have $40,000 in your audit fund, for example, you can only spend that $40,000 on audits. But if an audit only costs $15,000 a year, you have practically three years of dry powder, which is a little bit silly. So we ran them down, and now what we have to do is make sure that they're adequately funded to pay for the audits and the liability insurance and the unemployment insurance and fight the taxes, etc. We started doing that last year, didn't we? Uh, we did. And um, the last, 
Uh, the last two funds last year was the building and site fund, which still had about $130,000 in it or so. How much does it have in it now? Uh, it's a hundred thousand dollars deficit. We over we we depleted it and then some, so now we got to pay that deficit that off. That concerns me. Well, it, 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 I wouldn't be concerned. Um, okay. But you know, we'll, we'll we'll fix it by allocating let, uh, an appropriate amount of the current year's levy to uh, you know to offset that. Um, the other fund is the liability insurance fund, which still has about $120,000 in it, and we spend that at the rate of about $30,000 a year. And right now, all we're doing is is uh, allocating $1,000 uh, to that fund on an annual basis, just to you know, just to you know, keep you know, keep it open. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, Greg, I was just going to ask you to refresh our memories about something that is often confusing, the difference between special, special revenue and special reserve funds, okay. which uh, show up on our balance sheet, but uh, the, because they sound a lot alike, I think mm -hmm. it's easy to confuse them. Would you uh, uh, sure, talk about the difference between special revenue and special reserve funds? Uh, special revenue funds are uh, uh, constructed uh, for a specific uh, purpose. Actually, a special revenue fund is as well. But the, it's the special revenue funds are uh, uh, for a specific requirements that the uh, library faces. So as I was saying, we have to have an annual audit, so we have a special uh, reserve, special revenue fund for that. We have to have liability insurance. We have a uh, fund for that. Unemployment insurance. Um, we also have uh, uh, workers' compensation uh, insurance, uh, building site, building and site. You know, we have to maintain the building by law. So we have special revenue funds for all of these things. The uh, uh, special reserve uh, fund is really a capital improvements fund. Okay, so um, to, you know, large capital projects uh, around the library from putting a new roof on the library, to refreshing the uh, computer fleet and uh, the desktop computers in the entire library uh, on the patron and the uh, staff side are the types of things that come out of the uh, special reserve. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the concrete work that we just, that we just uh, talked about a moment ago will come out of the special reserve. Okay, great. My question, my concern, which you said don't be concerned, but I am concerned, is something that we've talked about in the past is the roof. We know it's going to be due pretty soon. You are up there. What do you think? Well, how long do you think we have before we have to replace that something? Um, actually, we have, uh, we have several roofs. Uh, they're inspected constantly. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, we just had some work done for about uh, two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars uh, to do some uh, patching and mm -hmm. things of that uh, nature. Where, you know, I mean, invariably, what happens is you, you create leaks. Something mm -hmm. will will nick it and, and create a hole, and the uh, substrate gets soft. And what you need to do is open it up, replace the substrate, you know, put the put the membrane on top of it, and then, you know, and then continue to look. I used to have a flat roof. I'm somewhat aware of that. Yeah. That's why I also know the life expectancy is pretty small, yeah. but pretty short. So when we have to replace the whole thing, that's going to be a big yeah. amount. Yeah, and we have if we have money. We set money aside in the uh, special reserve fund. There's um, I believe $1.5 million in the special, uh, in the special reserve, mm -hmm. which includes the roof. Okay. Um, uh, the total roof replacement was um, uh, was quoted to be around uh, $800,000. Um, most likely, uh, we'll replace it with pieces. Okay. Um, the east roof is, I always forget which is which, but one roof is newer than the other mm -hmm. and is in better shape, therefore. Mm -hmm. So we'll replace the older one, with, you know, mm -hmm. and then what we'll have to do is work with the staff to make sure that 
when we're replacing it, we're not replacing it during major programs or things of that nature so that, you know, we're not chasing people away. Okay. Another question I have is I remember, again, from probably over a year ago, is there was some kind of a vent or something that should have been replaced when some other stuff was replaced that had was several hundred dollars or something? Yeah, we've taken care of it. That's been fixed? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're... Uh, I'm just making sure because I'm thinking all of these, like we're talking building, all of these things that... Okay. Can I yeah. guess maybe the question is, so what is the building and site fund? What do you pay out of that? Uh, we pay a maintenance of the building as opposed to, as opposed to major projects. Okay, so that's just... Uh, like patching Cutting the grass, for okay. example. Okay. Um, you know, okay. the uh, the mats from Syntas. Oh, okay. you know, uh, I, I understand. Small okay. furniture and fixtures that, you know, they need to provide during the year. Okay. Uh, and things of that nature. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, uh, getting back to the presentation, uh, we're also facing elected property tax freeze. Um, like the property tax? Property tax freeze. 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 Okay. And uh, if you've been following the news, um, the uh, legislature put a property tax freeze on the governor's desk. It was a temporary freeze. And the governor, who really wants a permanent freeze, uh, decided not to sign it. So everybody in Springfield wants a property tax freeze, um, but they you know, they're arguing about uh, terms at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing to consider is a, a relatively new TIF district in the, uh, in the village. So, okay. so as, the, as they repair, as they repair uh, the uh, TIF district and bring it, you know, up to the level that, that they plan to, uh, the property values in that TIF district will rise uh, the way the district works is that any uh, increases in uh, property taxes on the properties in the district get, uh, don't go to the taxing bodies, but instead go into a TIF district fund. And then it's used to finance uh, further improvements uh, and so forth. Um, we also have uh, you know, growth and expansion in, uh, in our current uh, service set. You know, take passports for example. Um, you know, we have. Uh, yeah, I mean, that happens to be what we're talking about now. But as new uh, opportunities come along, um, you know, Susan and the librarians decide whether or not that's something that's worth uh, uh, adding to our uh, to our current offering. And then we have. Uh, so what, I'm sorry. What does that mean? Well, if if you decide. Uh, uh, a few years ago, for example, we decided to uh, create a new department called Digital Services, which created, uh, you know, staff and so forth, which required, which resulted in additional expenses. Yeah. But I understand. I, I, that's what I, did, I thought. I just wanted to hear it out loud. Because you're, you're expanding. Don't play. No, I wanted, no, I, I I wanted it on camera. Uh, you know what? Please. No, I wanted it on camera because everybody realizes we do more programs and we think and talk about more programs. And you know what happens? We have to pay for it in the end. So we're paying now for the people and all the stuff that went into the digital programs. That's not books. It's not magazines. It's not library stuff. It's stuff to grow the library, to feed the salaries that oh, work for you guys. Oh, excuse me. No, I, it, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. That's very insulting. No, it, it, Quit pulling the insulting card. It's not insulting. It is what it is. You grow a program, you put another program in there, you put Phantom Fest in there, you put uh, digital programming in there, and when you put those in there, it takes people to do that. If you didn't have digital services, you'd have less. You, you wouldn't have as many people. That's not insulting you. It is what it is. If, if you're saying that we're going to go ahead and do passports, and oh, by the way, I'm thinking that we may have to have some full-time people. That means we're going to have to pay for that, just like we're paying for digital. They're nice to have. So I'm telling you, they're great to have. But that's not what libraries were made for. That's not what they were built for. You're making this into a community center. 
you're paying for things that we shouldn't be paying for. I think there's a great debate as to what libraries can and should do. And uh, many other libraries provide many other services that we don't. Provide. You know, it, it's the same thing so, with my kids. You know, oh, Joey's got a big house. You know what? We yeah. don't have a big house. Yeah. So, you know, just because Joey's got a big house and Sally's got a big house, I don't have to have a big house. It's, it's what, it's what we, promotes we, our you know, decide what services we want to provide. And what has traditionally been thought of as library services is not necessarily what people today yeah, well, That's what people services. have to vote on. All right, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. Our next, Thank you. Our next uh, point is what, strategic planning? Yeah, and uh, what, uh, what uh, additional uh, uh, efforts when you come forth from uh, strategic planning also have to be uh, covered. And we're just at the, at the front end of uh, pursuing that. Okay. Is there a dollar figure that you're anticipating we should be worried about? That we so this slide shows the um, Niles Main property tax levy history uh, from you. 2011 to 2017. Um, and I split it into, uh, into two Areas the general fund, which is the general operating fund of the library, and and which uh, funds all the uh, services uh, that you see here, and as well as the acquisition of materials. And then the gray bar is all of the special revenue funds. You know, the interesting thing is, uh, as you as you look at this at this bar, we had a pretty significant amount of funding going on, which you know, which we kept um, uh, for quite a while. And then we topped out at just short of uh, $7.2 million uh, in terms of the levy in 2012. And then uh, we uh, decreased in, um, in two years, a $1 million in 2013 and another 200000 in 2014. And we recovered um, uh, some of that in uh, 2015 and brought the total levy to about six point seven six million seven fourteen four seventy four seven eighteen four seventy four and we've kept that flat. The the general fund portion has risen along with that but has dropped off as as the funding requirements for the uh, uh, special re revenue funds has uh, has increased. So this is this is the uh, general fund uh, projection. Uh, we hold uh, revenue consistent with no increases. So you can see in the in the current budget year, 17-18, we're at just short of 6.5 million in revenue. And if you follow it out to the right, that stays uh, uh, consistent. And then when we look at general fund expenditures, we increase them by 2.7% per annum, which is the actual experience that we're seeing uh, given a 3% annual salary increase and uh, increases in, uh, in uh, the rest of the base. I want to point out a couple of things. In 16-17, we have uh, a very significant general fund expenditure line here. That's because Two million of that went to IMRF. That's part of our expenditure base. Mm -hmm. And then in 17-18, we have an additional five hundred thousand dollars in the budget intended to go to IMRF at the uh, at the end of this calendar year. And then in the subsequent years, we're increasing the base exclusive of those special payments to uh, uh, to the tune of uh, two point seven percent a year. Because those monies we already put to IMRF are going to keep us at a lower level. Okay, but we... It's, it's, it's referred to as a compounded annual growth rate. That's, that's okay. been developed over a number of years. All right. But we, we actually have given 3% wage increases for the past few years. Yeah, so uh, what that means is that other expenses are not increasing as fast as mm -hmm. other wages. So... Um, uh, how do I say it? If you if you look at our total uh, our total expenses as a pie, about seventy five percent are related to employment expenses, mm -hmm. and what that includes is wages and statutory uh, taxes like a, you know FICA, uh, uh, 
it also includes uh, health insurance, which has its own uh, uh, inflation, and, uh, and other health type programs and disability insurance and so forth. Um, and the, the remaining 25%, um, we, we work very hard to make sure that, you know, that we get everything that we pay for and that we're not, you know, we're never paying uh, higher than the market. A good example of that is the uh, $3,500 that we were able to recover from our bank because they were inappropriately, you know, in a, mm. they were inaccurately charging us uh, okay. for, uh, for fees. So they went back and they looked at it and they issued credits across the board. Um, in terms of wages, uh, even though we might give a 3% increase, do we sometimes save money because of turnover? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. something we can fairly regularly rely on. Well, I mean, well, I know you can't really. But. Yeah. Um, so if you if you look back to, um, but I think it's like you do it at two point seven, regardless of whether you're going three anyway. So you're kind of hedging that you're going to be around two point seven, right? No, that's inaccurate. Um, what I've done is I've taken I've taken a, a string, uh -huh. and I've determined. Uh, mathematically, that in order to start at A and go to Z, yeah. it takes a 2.7 percent annual compounded rate, yeah. a compounded annual rate on the entire base of the uh, expenditures. So that includes. But you're assuming that, as she said, that we, in many cases, can go to three percent. So there's an assumption that there's going to be some above three. Above 2.7, there's going to be some other stuff. That's you're reading too much into it. It's simpler than that. You know, it, it's like they started a million dollars and they go to 4.5 million dollars yeah. 20 years later. Yeah. What do I need to do? What do I need to grow on an annual comp a compounded uh, basis in order to get there? And you're using 2.7. 2.7. Because. Because that's that's what you saw. That's what it solves for. That's that's what. what? That's what it solves for. So if you, yeah, yeah, I think that I went back to uh, you know, maybe 2007 or something like that yeah. and ran it forward. And if you take 2.7% and apply it, yeah. you get to the program. Okay. 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 All right. So um, I'm not sure if you finished answering that question, but I want to yeah. give other people a chance to. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's other people I can't remember. Okay, all right. So again, without uh, you know expressing a lot of opinions right now, if we have any just sort of basic questions about what we've seen here, and if there's any questions about the data or the charts or anything. I had a question. Yes? Um, it was regarding FICA, and I know FICA comes out of the mm -hmm. revenue fund which they're depleting, but when we consider salaries, isn't FICA part of it, and that's part of our budget? figure anyway, so it's not like it's not being covered. Well, it's being covered, but as a special revenue fund. Okay, so, the, for, I mean, so for this, analy for this analysis, uh, FICA is not part of that. If I said it was, I, I misspoke. Oh, no, I thought, well, maybe I'm finished, but I thought you said, no, we need to consider FICA, and I'm thinking about... I misspoke. Okay, that's I fine. Misspoke. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, thank you. That was my question. Yes. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Just for clarity, um, the total annual funds deficit in 2016-17 expected to be a negative 100,000. So right there, we can't get that money from anywhere else. We have to get it from tax dollar and put that money into the fund. So right. I look at it as we definitely need 100,000 no matter what. Yeah. Because so, we have to put money back into those funds in order to make it not a deficit. So that to me is a, a non-negotiable. Well, so, so what happens is we levy a large amount, mm -hmm. okay, it's $6.7 million, right. and the way that we levy is in parts, we allocate some to the uh, special revenue funds mm -hmm. in order to make them whole and so forth, and, and then we uh, put the balance into the general, into the general fund, right. okay, and, and that is what this is, yeah, this is what is being illustrated here with this slide, um, where the uh, bar on the top, uh, I guess it's, it's gray on, the, on my screen, but blue on the presentation mm -hmm. screen, uh, actually starts to widen 
Mm -hmm. Okay. And but the top line is level. Right. And what you see is a decrease in the uh, in the uh, general fund allocation to accommodate the increase in the special budget funds to wipe out that deficit and to fund them going forward. Um, I have a question. If we didn't increase it at all, what are the repercussions of looking at it again next year? And just so I can make sure we all understand the question, when you say it, you're talking about the total levy, yeah. not the special revenue or the general, you're talking right. about the total, correct? Right. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. So, uh, uh, this, you know, we'll exercise the same process next year. We'll take a look at it. The state will tell us what um, what the limits are. But I don't, I don't, I don't see inflation uh, being more than five uh, percent next year. So it'll probably, uh, you know, be somewhere in the uh, in the one to two uh, percent range that you know that you can look at next year, increase the budget next year if that's what your desire is. But what you can't do is go back and capture the foregone increase uh, for this year. Because this is is based on having is doing the 2.1 tax levy. Uh, the, the, this is being increased. The blue line is, yeah. Right, the yeah, right. Green line is so this no would interest. actually go down then and meet the green line. The general fund. Staying the same as the green line. The blue line is if we increase, correct? Yeah. So this this uh, shows an increase, and this line right here mm -hmm. shows no increase. Okay. So okay. it's, it's so just a sooner. It's a couple of years earlier of of okay. deficits. Of okay. deficits. Okay. Start, right. you, okay. I got you. Know, you. I mean, you know, we're not. I mean, we're talking about revenues. I know. You know, a lot of people have feelings about the expense levels and so forth, and, and what should be done around that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but pulling that aside and just, just you know, and just taking for the sake of the modeling that we're going to grow by uh, historical compounded annual growth rate, that's you know that's what we're looking at. Okay. Can I ask now? Yep. Okay. From what I remember, when we raised it before, we raised it as much as we could because it was a one-time thing. That was the only time we could raise it that much. Otherwise. After that, it's going to drop drastically, and that was because of the fact they had been dropped so drastically that we were like it was a recovery period or something. Now this, and what adds to this more now, is if they put the freeze in, or they are putting the freeze in, who knows if we'll be able to increase it? Is right. that part of the thing too? Why we right. I mean, we may, uh, we could very possibly be sitting around this table in a you know in a year's time. And there's nothing to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, we got what we got. And my biggest concern, and it always has been, is to keep this place out of the red. And and my also biggest concern is the fact we've got this building that is a huge expense too, if anything goes wrong. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of. Yeah. So um, let me go back to the start of your statement and just correct it a little bit. Okay, I mean, fine. You were, you were mostly right. Um, um, the tax, our tax rate, our tax amount, our tax levy was at $7.2 million. And after two successive uh, decreases, mm -hmm. it was down around $6 million, $5 million, mm -hmm. nine something. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2015, for the 2015 levy, mm -hmm. Uh, we did increase it significantly, and you're right. You know, we could go back, you know, to a, a time when it was higher, and then we could have taken it all the way to 7.2 million. But we didn't. But the board decided not to. Uh, the board only took it up $800,000. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you look back to that 7.2 million uh, levy, and I think it was 2011 or, or whatever, uh, 2012, I think. Um, we're actually below that high point. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, so this is the high point right here, mm -hmm. okay, which is just shy of $7.2 million. And this is where we are right now. Yes, I, which I is saw that. $6,718,000. Any other questions? Okay, um, what I'd like to do now is uh, give each person in turn a uh, chance to express their opinion as to what they think we should do with the levy in terms of um, uh, lowering it, raising it, keeping it the same, and specifically addressing um, amounts to go into the, not exact amounts, but relative amounts go, to go into the special reserve fund too. I just want uh, your opinion on that. Uh, in terms of if we should direct more or less or about the same in the special revenue fund. I don't know that work out, but, um, Can I ask one more question? One more ahead. question. Um, Craig, about special revenues. I know our, I thought our auditor actually two years ago suggested doing away with them and moving FICA over to the like general fund. What would be the advantage of doing that? Um, well, I mean, it, you know, their uh, their statutory requirements. We already have the fund structure set up, and I, I I'm comfortable levying specifically for those funds and collecting and allocating for those funds because what a lot of businesses will do over time is if they get in trouble, those those short Uncle Sam on the uh, withholdings and okay. the uh, Social Security benefits. Okay. And so I always want to make sure that we're squared with Uncle Sam. I want to make sure that our employees are adequately insured, uh, whether it's uh, for workers' comp or for uh, unemployment. Um, you have a duty to make sure that the building is taken care of. That's mm -hmm. the building and site fund. Uh, so I would think that you would want to make sure that monies were specifically allocated uh, to that fund to make sure that you're preserving the, the biggest asset that the, uh, that the library owns. Yes. Well, actually, I have a duty for every penny that comes into this library, but what I'm trying to say is why would an auditor think it beneficial to, to just delete those funds? Yeah, I, I don't remember the comment specifically, Carolyn. Okay. Um, but, but your concern is the risk of the money being spent and not being available if it's not in a special. Yeah, I mean, once we do away with it, you know, it, you get one big lump sum and then it goes into the general fund. And, and okay. I'm not worried, you know, so much about uh, myself, um, but, you know, successors or other types of influences that. You know, might prevent us from doing the right thing. Sure, sure. No, I just thought there was an advantage, so I was wondering well, what's the advantage? No, I meant of, of eliminating it. Yeah. But what you're saying, we could put uh, ourselves if you, at risk. if you eliminate it, you know, I mean, you know, trying to you know put myself in Judy's uh, uh, shoes, um, you know, it's easier. It's one fun. Uh, Maybe that's it. Okay, yeah. it, it was a passing comment, and I thought, oh, that's something to think about, and then I couldn't figure out. That we're repeatedly wanting to keep them, you know, um, at a certain level. Why she would say that, but that's fine. All right, good. That's a good enough explanation. Thanks. Okay. So can I, um, can I just ask another yeah. question about the special revenue funds that you show here? Mm -hmm. You expect the deficit this year to be about a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. knowing that we. Approximately every other year, we spend six hundred thousand on it. Mm -hmm. And you explain to me how they haven't done. I'm a little confused. Um, you know, so uh, you try to predict spending rates in uh, certain areas, and uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't as accurate on the building and site fund. This is really building and site fund that we're talking about. And we were trying to spend it down to zero. I had some funds coming in uh, to it, but not enough. So what did we spend on the building? It was $100,000. Uh, no one thing, because if it's not anything that big, if it comes out of the uh, special yeah. reserve fund. Um, but you know the uh, types of things that we do spend on uh, uh, building and site, 
we have uh, ongoing repairs and improvements. And so far this year, uh, we've spent uh, uh, $27,000. Um, you know that roof repair I was talking about? It comes out of there. So we, have, we also have contractual maintenance. So we have contracts with uh, people to plow the snow. We have contracts with people to mow the, uh, mow the lawn. We also have contracts with uh, HVAC and elevator companies to maintain the complexities of those systems. And for, for whatever reason, it was just more this particular time than uh, over time past. It, it was, you know, it was uh, a slight uptick without having enough revenue available at a particular time. But it's the first time it's, you know, in four years that it's, you know, that it's been so far in the red. Uh, and it's easily corrected. Okay. All right. Um, so, Dennis, would that go first? I guess uh, I, I, I realize that, you know, based on what we've got plotted out here, we, we have to go about some way of increasing the light. My take on it, the way I would, the way I would do things, is, is uh, I, I would go back. Core library stuff, and, and I would start saying, uh, I looked at that one sheet of paper that he had the list of programs. I said, Wow, we can do a lot of stuff here. In order to do that, a lot of stuff, it, it requires us to, to have a lot of people. So, you know, uh, you know, I'm getting to be an old guy myself, and, and I, I listen to my kids always wanting more. Always wanting more, and I I like to provide more where I can. I do, uh, but when it comes down to it, you know, uh, I rather than continuing to assume that we're going to go up at 2.7, 2.7, 2.7, uh, I like to think that you know there's some way that we could do something to reduce that. Now the library is never going to go away. Because the library is what it is. It's it's what it's what uh, some people feel the library should be. Is what's carrying us in that direction. And it's it's not just here. Right? So please, nobody take offense. I, I don't mean to, to 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 insult anybody here. It's it's what happens. It's it's happening across the board. We do things for people, as the guy in the wired section says, to reduce the inequities amongst people. And, and that's not what the library is for. The library is there, it was started a long time ago, to provide all kinds of information and research. And, and we've, we've over time, many, 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 many years, have changed that. And so but, but Dennis, if you could maybe focus in on then, yeah, this, so I'm trying to focus. Levy, so, yeah. so, so for this levy, what I would do is I would be I would be cutting programs, but we don't know what those costs associated with those programs. So, uh, because when I would cut programs, I would cut programs, and along with those programs, I would cut people. Just it's just me. It's just the way I run things. You know, I don't have the the, the capabilities when I run my budget to just say I'm going to give you some more. I don't. I just don't. Uh, so I, I run things the way I, 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 I see things the way I run my budget and the way I see things done in, in uh, non-governmental or other types of organizations. Uh, I, you know, that's just me. So I, I would try to find some ways to scale back what we're doing. You know, uh, that's just me. I, 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 I'm always, I've always been a thrifty guy, you know, my family says we're going to be the last house on Amer in America that has cable, because, you know, it's, it's more money, and you know what, I, I, I say I can't, I can't afford it, so, so I, I'm, I'm hard on myself, just as I am <laughs> on many, many, many other people, so, you know. So, in terms of the lesson for the coming year, um, Given what, what we know, mm -hmm. uh, what what do you think would be appropriate in terms of uh, the levy? I, I would say not to raise it and to find 
ways to cut that. that that's my opinion. I, and, and I know out there is a lot of other people who aren't going to feel that way. My opinion would be to not raise the levy, to find ways where we can make cuts, uh, you know, not provide as much. Uh, and, and that's just me. And, and uh, I, I, I enjoy the things. I came to Phantom Fest, and I loved it. It was fun. I was uh, seeing the smiling faces, and it was a good time. But, you know, uh, that takes a lot of people's efforts. I, you know, I know when you do projects, it takes a lot of effort to pull that stuff off. It's probably, you know, a lot of, a lot of tired people when it was finished. And uh, do you favor uh, directing more money into the special revenue funds or about the same? I, 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 I rely on the good folks on that side of the table to, uh, uh, to, to come up with a plan. To help, you know, to, to bring to us a plan that would, you know, this is how we can avoid going up at this 2.7 percent, you know, level. You know, that that would be my my way of, of doing that. But you know, I, I'm a, I'm a terribly thrifty guy. You know, I had a lot of German in me, a lot of Polish, <laughs> very thrifty folks. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Linda? Um, I'm, after, I mean, I kind of came in honestly thinking that I was kind of going to go with um, flat across the board. Um, but after looking at the presentation, I'm, I think what I'm really nervous about is the property tax freeze. And um, if that happens, that could really put us in a financial burden to go on. I think for the 2.7, if that, or the 2.1 is what we can do, right? That's the mm -hmm. CPF, right? Yeah. The levy. The 2.1, um, when you weigh it in what we actually pay out, I think it's a lot, you get a lot of bang for your buck. When everyone, to build a community, if everyone puts in a little bit, you get so much more in return, especially in your library. Um, I, right now, looking at after the PowerPoint, um, I would go with the full 2.1. All right. Um, Linda? Yeah, I agree with that. We just want to make sure I'm understanding this PowerPoint. I'm looking at general fund projection, revenues, and expenditures. And as I go across the board, we look fine until 2021, 2022. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. okay. um, my approach to this levy increase or decrease is whether um, the TIF takes all of the money away, whether the state freezes real estate taxes, I don't feel that should affect the way we operate in this library. Um, I am still extremely irritated by the fact that our administration doesn't feel the need to evaluate their programs or their staffing. We have never seen any information that right, details. Well, like, if, if we can focus on I, the I am focusing. Right I am you're, you're, you're done. done. No, it's, it's my. To focus you know what? Excuse me, I'm speaking now. Well, right? yeah, I have no, asked for four years for specific information about staffing and programs. So let's just pick staffing. I believe our budget this year is $1 million more than last year. But we did not take any time to review what our, our most expensive component is, staffing. And I'm not saying we should cut staff. I'm saying you have an obligation to provide me with factual details that justify every single position in this library. You also have an obligation to tell me what on earth we're doing with these programs. I'm looking at receipts for expense after expense after expense, and I want to know what does it cost to put on this program. And I am concerned how many Niles residents are coming here. So I can tell them, this is how this was determined. This is what we're doing with your money. Or if there's a problem, we could discuss it. You give us no factual data at all. You just raise it and raise it and raise it, and you think that's okay. It's not. 
Carolyn, at the end of this meeting, you're going to have an opportunity to say. I'm not exactly finished, and I'm not interested in my opportunity exactly later. What data okay, so I, I, that my, you are looking for? Okay. Because my you often question, complain you haven't gotten data, but you never say ahead of time what it is that you're looking okay, for. Okay, in 2014, at our last meeting, it was called the Levy Increase Meeting, I asked for specifics on our programs. We asked to have the uh, Chapter 1 reevaluated year after year after year to decrease that outrageous cost. Nothing's been done. Trustee Martin gets on, on 20, in 2017 in April, and what do you know? Same concern. You've never brought anything to us to say, this is how we've contacted other vendors. These are the changes we could do. I asked you to change the paper. I asked you to redesign it. I guess you to rethink what you're offering. Never brought anything to this board. Yes, I've asked many times. Every year before the budget process, I asked for staffing and programming information. I got nothing. The last time, Linda Ryan told me I was micromanaging our director. And that's another thing. Maybe we need to get our positions in order. All of you sitting around this table that are called trustees, were elected by the taxpayers. And I think you keep forgetting what your role is. We are responsible for the budget. Susan Lundke is the director and manages coming to us for approval. So we do have an obligation to receive this information and make valid decisions. You want me to make a decision on a levy and I can't confirm anything you're spending your money on. All I can tell you is I've gone through several receipts, and I see a lot of money being spent on the summer reading program. I mean, between the giveaways and the pizza, the meetings, we have food for this right, meeting, Carolyn, food you, for that you meeting. Want to express an so my question about? is, my question is, you don't think any of these costs can be reviewed, reevaluated, and cut, and there'd never be an increase for a levy. We pay for Humongous okay, kitchen right. supplies. Uh, Carolyn, None of that Carolyn, needs to be all right, increased. Carolyn, that's it. I've given you a number of opportunities to say whether you want to increase the levy or keep it the same, and you refuse to address it. So I'm moving on. I would I'm like, on. I'm requesting data right, to right. make that valid decision. We can't sit here and discuss the levy if I can't validate what we're doing in the library based on a PowerPoint with no details. That's how you increase okay. the budget a million dollars. Going on to the next person who is padding. Thank you. Um, I am partly finding a negative part of me that wants to come out, and I'm fighting for it not to come out right now. Bonus. <laughs> but it's quite a struggle. I've sat here and listened to myself and my other board members being insulted, which I think is very unprofessional. And I don't particularly appreciate it. I've also sat here and listened to you insult Greg and Susan. I'm requesting information. I don't mean to insult anyone. Well, then maybe you ought to think of how you present yourself. I have requested it in writing for four right. years. Okay, thank you. That's, okay. Okay. That's all I wanted to say. Right now I will go to what I should be yeah. saying. Like I've said many, many times since I've been on this board, my biggest concern is to see it going red. And I also feel that we have hired Susan and Ray both for their knowledge and to oversee things and then report to us, which I feel satisfied with what I'm getting back. If you don't, I'm sorry. Uh, so therefore, I am concerned when I look at the green light. Be and I'm also concerned when I look at the blue line, because the blue line doesn't give you that much more of a length of time before you still hit the red. So I'm kind of like, what do we get? Uh, two, three years difference there? Is it going to make that much of a difference to increase it? Uh, you know, I don't know. Seeing that red concerns me. Um, I don't know. I 
I, I, I can see the point of increasing it because of the tax rates to keep us, because once we get tax rates, that's it. But I also do think we have to look and seriously consider how we're spending our money. Because I don't want to get in the red. That's my biggest concern. Because once we're in the red, we're how are we going to dig ourselves out of it? So I, at this point, would say yes, but. Yes to what? To the increase. We're, we're done, or are we done? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, because this whole thing is just, it's frustrating. I, okay. Yeah. All right, Diane. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I've written down a few things that I'd like to say. I agree with uh, Dennis. I'm a very frugal person as well. And I pay all my bills on time. And, but I love what the library is doing. I don't disagree with the fact that we must always look at our expenses, look to lower them if possible. I think so. We heard a lot of good things coming from Susan as far as programming and what they're um, doing. I disagree with you that the library is only a place to get books because no, no, no. It's, not it. it's, it's not. And we should talk more about it. Yeah. I don't want to hold yes, up now. Do, yeah, let's talk now. Yeah. This has always yeah, been. It's, it's not all about just books. I mean, it is so essential to our community. It is a place for knowledge and education to right. all. Yes, right. Not just yes. our residents. No, I agree. To all. And free education and knowledge. But. But the other expenditures, digital. Is and that, is of not course, we. I mean, I look at my expenses. So do they have to do that? Um, yeah, but that's, libraries. That's, that's but I'm a librarian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Libraries are changing all over the world, yeah, that's what and I said. we are headed in the right direction. As far as I'm concerned, keep the innovation coming. Keep the expenses down as much as you can. Pay your bills on time. Yeah. And I looked at my tax bill for the past, up to 2010, and guess what? This year I paid $13 more than 2010. Well, I wish everything I bought would only went up that much. It's, it's been a, a okay. I don't want to interrupt you. Okay, so, so I, actually was I, highest I agree. I, I really would like to keep it the same, but if we have a deficit, of a hundred thousand, I, I, leaning towards increasing the tax levy a bit. Uh, a bit. A bit. Okay. I mean, you know, we, you know, <laughs> when, when the levy's increased, it doesn't. You're struggling as well. It doesn't yeah. have to be increased exactly two point one percent. That's the maximum. It could be increased one percent. I mean, do we have to decide right at this moment? Well, um, we have to move forward with this. Um, so I, we have I, to decide I, tonight. No. We, we cannot take action on it tonight. Okay. Oh, it's not in the you. agenda. So I'm leaning towards the agenda. Discussion. Discussion. Determine the levy. Discussion. 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 Determine yeah. the levy is what's on the agenda so that you yeah. can vote on it next month. Well, based on the information that Boy, we have, if, if, if it, that's point, the way it was. I, agree I, I sure wasn't clear on that. Increasing the levy by 2.1%. Wow. So I don't think it's enough time. Make a decision. I'm sorry, what did you just say, Susan, about uh, the agenda? Um, no, she was clarifying what the agenda yeah, was. The agenda yeah. item is to yeah. determine the levy. And next month determine you would amount, vote yeah. on, you would actually vote on the ordinance. Wow. So that would be to direct the staff to, to come up with the your amount. And then no, it's, a, well, to come up with the amount, but it would be, a, but you would have to tell us what you want us to do. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Is there a due date for the levy? Yes. When? <laughs> November, December. I believe it is. It's like the first Tuesday in December or something okay, like so that. Okay, so we have plenty so of time. Must we make a we, decision? You don't have plenty of time. You could potentially 
postpone voting on the ordinance until the November meeting, but you already have quite a bit in the November meeting. But that's not, that shouldn't be the reason. I'd like to have time to discuss this even after this evening with board members. I just think, we, you know, we come to a meeting, we cram it down our throats, and we got to vote right now. Does it make This is terrible. Well, based on what was presented tonight, I, I vote for the increase in the levy. Um, okay, I so my, uh, I don't know which and when, when you say in, increase, which increase are you referring to, Diane? 2.1? Yeah, because yeah, right? we need an amount. Yes. All right. Um, you know, we have uh, kept the um, levy the same um, since 2015, and I, I'd like to keep doing that, um, And but I, I have a couple of concerns, and I, I guess my biggest concerns are things that are outside of our control. Uh, I too like to be frugal. You might not think so, but oh no, I didn't say that. I and, didn't say that. Um, you know, to keep our costs down. But there are some things that are out of our control mm -hmm. that I worry about. And one is we're going to lose, pretty frugal um, yeah, right. perhaps lose uh, <laughs> some <laughs> money as a result of the tip district. That might not be a whole lot, but we, we might lose some there. But uh, my big concern is that property tax freeze. I, I'm very it's the biggest thing that worries me of all these considerations um, that are listed. Uh, also, I mean, the special revenue fund, I do think we have to put more money in there. That's not going to be a huge amount, but it's the property tax freeze that I worry about. Were it not for that freeze looming on the horizon, I would say, uh, just keep it the same. We'll, we'll address this next year. Next year, we'll raise the levy if we need to leave it, to, to, to uh, raise it. And I. I would say just keep it the same for this year. But I, I very much worry about that property tax freeze. I, I worry that next year we'll sit here and we won't be able to raise that uh, levy. And that chance to capture that income will be gone. And if it eventually is a permanent tax freeze, or maybe if there's a compromise in the legislature, it'll be a semi-permanent one. Maybe it'll last for five years. I don't know. I, I don't know what they're going to do. And that, that's what does concern me. Um, again, my, my original inclination was to say, let's just keep it the same. Mm -hmm. let's, not, let's not levy any more than we have in the past. Let's continue to fund uh, a fairly high percentage of the revenue that we take into the special revenue fund. Um, but, but because of that potential tax freeze, I, I feel that in order to act fiscally responsible, we have to get that additional revenue that we can get now, which we might not be able to get next year or the year after or the year after that. Um, and it's uh, for that reason that... Well, we wouldn't I'm go multiple years where you can deal with it. Hmm? You wouldn't go multiple years. So I don't know that. It, well, it because be next year. next year could come around and, and after, you know, we could be sitting here again and, and somebody's going to want to say, well, we, we have to raise the levy again. Is but if there's a property oh, tax freeze, it was the this year it was for four years, and mm -hmm. that and Rauner wanted it to be a permanent tax freeze, and that you would have to go for referendum when well, you we, wanted we live to in raise Illinois. your referendum. Your we, li we, we live in Illinois. Yeah, are you are you telling me that we would have a, a property tax freeze? Yeah, we might well. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just ask for clarification? So, 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 coming up tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> so. so uh, let me just conclude my comments by saying, uh, for that reason, um, I, I favor an increase. I, uh, you know, other than that, I would, I would not. But I, I worry about our ability to raise the revenue we need in the future, given what looks like a, a property tax freeze coming down the road. Um, so that's where I stand on this. Can I just ask a question about your comment about the freeze? Is yes. that why, I guess, Greg, you have the same budget, the same general revenue fund running all the way across because you assumed for four years there would be a freeze? Uh, so um, in any case like this, there's uh, two or three possible outcomes. Uh, one is that you keep things flat. I wanted the board to see what it would look like if we kept things flat. Oh, I see. Okay. One is to increase um, up to uh, the maximum allowable by law, which is 2.1%. I wanted the board see, to, to see what that looked like as well. Um, and that's on, on the final slide of, yeah. the, uh, of the presentation. 
Okay, so then based on keeping it consistent for four years, in 2021, we would show a deficit. And you're saying in case the governor, and I doubt he's going to get away with this, freezes taxes indefinitely, the only way we can increase the levy is go to a referendum? Mm -hmm. Well, then that would mean the taxpayers would vote on it, right? And you know what, you got to consider all the people who think this is a great place would probably support it, but that gives us almost four years without anything, without a loss. So I'm, I'm still not, well anyway, so that was, I just, that yeah, was but my Once point. we're in the red, we're in the red. I know. How much is it going to take for us to get out of it? Not that much. You can reevaluate. That's what we're all about. So where do we go from I think we've got to come up with an amount, right? Um, we, we do. We do. Um, so far I've heard um, four in favor of 2.1%. Um, it, it's informally expressed here. We have a formal board that will be. It is Linda, Patty, Diane, and myself. Right, four. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, again, that, those were our informal positions. We can still, if there are any other comments that anyone wants to make, they can do so. All right. Um, so, do, do I have a motion to. Uh, no motion. We couldn't wait. We, we, it says to determine, right? Yeah, but you it's determine no based on the discussion. Okay. Stop. And then there's no motion needed? Right. No. Okay. It's not a. It's not an actionable is item. It's actionable to instruct to, us what to do for the do voting. Do you need a motion item. for us to instruct you? No, I need, but we do need, do need to instruct us. Okay. And that is All right. well, I guess your would be, position as the president. Uh, it would appear that that is how we're instructing you at this point. Um, but the motion itself will not be on the agenda next, 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 next month. month. Next month. Next <laughs> month. <laughs> Correct. I wish I could. And we don't yeah. know where Tim stands. Because I and then we they're going to come back don't. with more information yeah. for us. Uh, well, if you what? want more information, you need oh. to, to say what specific information oh, you're looking no, for. I just was wondering what was the next step. What's the step? direction? The next step? Step? I lost something here. What's the direction you're giving the uh, staff? Based on the informal poll that we've taken mm -hmm. here, uh, the majority seem to want to go with 2.1%. Oh, increase. you decided on 2.1%. Oh, I, I didn't hear that part. That based on the uh, poll. Uh, because there's that, four people, right? Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, but that that is, um, right. I'm directing them to prepare the paperwork. Okay, for, for 2.1%. Next, okay. next month. I didn't hear that. the actual vote will take place next month. So um, they've said they don't need a motion to tell them what to do, but uh, we will need a motion to actually what are they going to do? Pardon? We'll put it on the agenda. We'll put it on the agenda. Oh, right. Draft an ordinance. Right. They, they actually draft an ordinance, okay. and it's it's got the dollar amounts okay. on it and, and okay. everything right. that's with that. Um, so that's where we are now. Um, but we're not we're not at the end of the agenda yet. Um, we did have unfinished business here. I wasn't sure if there was any unfinished business. Well, just one thing. We do have, and we're not done yet. We've got open yeah. to other yeah. two. Uh, we do have this great policy manual in front of us now. We're, I've been asking for a couple of months uh, to have it reissued with all the changes uh, that have been accumulating since we got our last copy of the manual. And I think they're all in there now, including our new name. So thank you very much for uh, it's all Diane. Making all the changes. I hope you know that. I didn't do 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 that. We do appreciate that. Oh, so. Does that. Let me tell so you. So, we're going to be looking at that and, and, and keeping it by our sides. Thank you very much. So, all right. I, I don't think there's anything else under unfinished business, but under other. Uh, Dennis, I told you at the earlier part of the meeting, you said there was something you wanted to discuss based on one of the comments that were made. Yeah, so based on. Joe's comments <clears throat> where he's talking about the concern on costs for taxes. You know, my thought was as well, you know, shouldn't there be some thought about trying to place a, a freeze on, on hiring? Uh, so I didn't know how do you go about doing that. Uh, and, and, and Joe's not the only one. I, I, I talked to many people, uh, you know, within the Niles main area. I, I attend a lot of the main township uh, 
uh, meetings on a regular basis and, and talk with those folks as well. So, so it's not the, uh, it's just not Joe. It's just it, it, a lot of people just don't show up. You know, there's a lot of concern about cost and tax, but they, 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 uh, they're, they're, uh, they're just not putting out an effort. Uh, to come here, uh, but I do hear a lot of discussion about it. So I, I, my thought was as well. So how can we action on what Joe was t saying? And, and uh, you know, uh, that's really what I wanted to do. I, I, I don't know if a freeze is what we do. Uh, maybe it is, uh, uh, but I think at some point, as we all know, that salaries are going to continue to go up. <clears throat> and and, and I, I, I think we do have to, as I've heard many times, try to really understand. I, I, I really liked the, uh, I really liked the, the whole program listing because it really gives you an understanding. I know I, I get the, uh, of all the programs, I, I know I get the, 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 the brochure, you know, and I get that brochure. Are you talking about chapter one? Oh mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, and it tells you there, but there it's just like boom. Here's here's all the programs. Here's who's attending and, and stuff like that. I says, well, uh, you know, it's it's that type of thing that you know. He said, well, you got to freeze it. You got somehow you got to do something because as, as you take people from part time to full time, or you continue to add stuff, people are coming up with great stuff all the time. You know, great ideas, great thoughts. They want to bring them in, and, and it requires more people and and and, and uh, so so that's where I was reacting to Joe's comments he's been in here a couple times and I like I said I know other people have had some concern about it as well so I don't know how we mm -hmm. try to adjust those concerns uh, well you know I think uh, a lot of people don't want to pay the amount of taxes that they're paying they want to pay more yeah. taxes um, but Simply because people don't want to pay the taxes, mean doesn't really mean that libraries is overstaffed, or that a hiring freeze yeah. is appropriate. We did have, yeah. uh, you may recall, we had a report last month uh, about the service we call in matrix, professional service to evaluate our staff and to evaluate whether or not we are overstaffed, understaffed, and and they concluded we were appropriately yeah. staffed. Now I will back up to just tell you how frugal I am. I voted against spending the money for Matrix. I yeah. said, yeah. I said that's too much money. I don't want to spend it yeah. on a consultant. We don't need to send that money out. But, yeah. but the rest of the board voted for it. Yeah. And the answer came back that we have an appropriate level yeah. of staff. Yeah, well, so, so and, and you know, so I, I don't know that so. dosing the staff is appropriate. And I understand what you're saying about so. freezing. May you, you know sometimes you think of that. Well, that. That will just make it doesn't go up, but it often hampers. Well, no, yeah, I, I would I would strongly consider it against just leaving it a freeze. I would take it further than that. It, the problem is, is we all go through this. Everybody uses it. Every governmental agency, every organization goes out there and they say, well, based on the survey, <coughs> you know, our salaries need to be here because we've done this survey. Well, and, and, and it's all in the common good, and it's all in the common good uh, uh, for for the people. So there's a savings of of we're saving people, we're keeping people engaged. We've got the community. You know, I remember when I was little, <coughs> we had nowhere near what we have today, and I grew up pretty damn happy. You know, so uh, <laughs> I, we continue to expand. And add things, you know, because we can, because we can just go back. We go back to the taxpayer and say we want to increase this and we want to increase that. So, I, it's just my, it's my opinion. I, I feel I grew up happy. I, I had nowhere near the stuff. Uh, I learned stuff that I needed to learn. Uh, some things I, I didn't get to do. I didn't get to play on a lot of the the uh, big, you know, uh, uh, the a uh, lot of the teams because it cost money. Uh, so, but I still grew up okay. You know, I still learned a lot. Uh, what I was going to say on defense of oh, so it was Dennis and, and I'm not yeah. picking on her. No, it's and I'm her. not saying you know her. So, 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 I'm just so, so, saying so, so. in general because <laughs> we, as the board, we all agree that majority of the hires now are less than 20 hours. Therefore, we do not have the expense of the extras, the insurances and the uh, IMRF and stuff. So we are keeping that down. At least the hirings 
are part-time. Yeah. So, I mean, they are, we are kind of watching that. Yeah. But to just say, okay, now we need to lay off people, that kind of, it, I don't think is... Yeah, it's, it's just, oh, it, it was just, it was just, I'm trying to, you know, uh, answer somebody's uh, uh, request that has come here a couple times. And I, I just, you know, I, I just, I see it that when somebody says there seems to be a problem and an issue, I said, well, let's talk about it. I could just say a yeah, yeah. Um, also, before um, you were here, we did have a buyout where we got rid of our top mm -hmm. salaries mm -hmm. so that we could get that off so that we could actually bring our expenses down. So that, too, we've done and looked at so that we can hire at a much lower cost and get rid of those high salaries. So that was a really good um, piece for us. Also, I think we just need to look and focus what Diane did with the actual information. 2010, 2016 taxes or 15, whatever, $15, that's not a lot of money for what we're getting. And look at all the extra things we're doing. I mean, honestly, I think that is a telltale sign that we are doing so much more with so much less. So, I, you know, it's it's the taxing bodies. I think that bodies. is the factual evidence we have. It's the taxing bodies, and, and uh, that's where the famous candy bar statement came from, uh, from the last time. It's the taxing bodies that say it's it's only a couple dollars here and there. Well, unfortunately, I not only pay for the library, I pay for taxes on gas, I pay on taxes for, for, for so many things. Phone, taxes on phones is, is just like sky high and craziness. So it's, it's the multiples of tax, that it's the accumulation, it's not the one, it's the multiples. And, you know, if I had control in other areas, I would work on those taxes as well. Okay. Can right. I make Thank a you. comment and then I also have another? Well, yeah, you, you had... Uh, but I wanted to respond to a couple of comments about right here. Um, regarding the matrix study, which I definitely was for, um, what he said was our staffing was appropriate based on our space allocations that there were, you couldn't do much about it because of the way your, uh, your library is structured. I believe that too can change, but based on what you had and who was employed, who's employed on your different floors, he, he, is, he labeled that appropriate. He also said we were comparable to other area libraries. Now, neither one of those comments really justify us reviewing and evaluating our staff, what their tasks involve, and the costs. To get, give us a better idea. Yes, our salaries are over $5 million, and your tax bill may be the same or not much more than several years ago, but the truth of the matter, libraries are like ghost towns. We are nowhere near what we used to be. Although we've re-identified ourselves, we have you know all these kids here for all these different kind of programs. Some people feel we're walking away from what a library is. Some people are pleased. But I think in order to really be able to make any justification, this board should review information. And our programs too, we have hundreds of them, but I'm sure they all can't be profitable or great ideas. And I'd like to see us somehow get involved with that process. Then we can make our own determination, not based on somebody else's opinion. But that was my comment on everyone else's comments. Um, so now you had a, a separate matter. You actually, yes. My and other, and, oh, and by I, the way, I, one. I just have a question over here, I think. Yeah, uh, salaries in, the, in this budget year are $3.4 million. Okay, and that's right. That but that doesn't, we have to include benefits. That's all part of the package. So it's over five. He's got another, another question. Other <laughs> question. Uh, benefits um, are approximately $1.2 million, and that includes a half million dollars uh, special payment to IMRF. All right. And so on an ongoing normalized basis, it's in the seven to 800000 range. When you, add it to three, yeah, when you add it to the 3.4 million, it's about 4.1. Okay. So what were those numbers again? So it's about a rough. You, you got them right there. Okay. And, and, but I'll, I'll tell them to you. In the budget? 
the budgeted salaries yeah. are 3.4 3. million. 3.4. The uh, total uh, benefits are about, I think it's 1.2 and change. I, I want to say 1.278. But that's just because of a special thing, so it'll shrink. It's half a million dollars bigger this year because yeah. of the special payment to IMRF, which leaves us, I believe, with about 800,000 okay. ish. And when you add uh, that to the, you know, 3.4, it's 4.1, 4.2. Yeah, that's good because pe I, I, believe it or not, I got people asking me. It, it, it's just easier for me to just like boom. Yeah, well, you have a, yeah. your budget yeah. book has yeah. all that detail. Well, yeah. You know, the budget that you gave us for 2017-18 is where I got those figures from. And I, I, I commented at the board meeting, and that's where I came up with five. Yeah, it's incorrect. So did that, that budget I have that if you gave you look, me change? No, that budget uh, was incorporated directly into the financial reporting system, which... All right, I'll have to check that. You yeah. can check it now. I need to oh, no, I have to compare it with what I have at home. Oh, of course. Because that was what was at the last meeting. Okay, well, that would be good to know, but 4.6 million is still a number. All I'm saying is we should review what we do. It's 4.1. 3.4 plus 1.2. Yeah, well, that, it's only, you know, like a half a million more this year because of... Special payment. Though. It's yeah. still, so it's still better. So it'll come back down to, it'll be well, down we'll to 4.1. Well, we'll see. We'll see if it comes back down. Point. We have other things to consider. Yeah, IMRF doesn't go away, but I'll, I'll definitely make that note. Okay. So, now, Carolyn, uh, you said you wanted to address something at the end of the meeting? Yes. Um, I have, brought up... Um, you know, if you have some specific requests... I do. To yeah, data, I brought up my issues. Or, let, maybe just finish my sentence. It's to data that you want the staff to provide to everyone. Let us know. Well, I don't know if I want to take it in that direction. Data. I'll tell you what my suggestion is, because that's too cumbersome and time-consuming, and it seems to be problematic. But let me tell you how I think maybe a better way to address my issue. And my issue is always the same. I feel that this board should have um, an idea of exactly what our salaries, what our positions in this library are um, that would involve their tasks, their hours, what they accomplish. I mean, usually every job in a company is identified by tasks and about outcomes. And there's usually reports on all of that, and that's how a manager, a department manager, would decide what she's doing with her staff Wasn't next year. Just... No. Um, so um, I'd like to see, the, it's called details, it's data. Well, it says how many of them are part-time, yeah, how many no, of them are full-time? No, I'm asking about specific tasks per position so we understand what our employees do. Okay. I think the best way to discuss that type of information and receive it would be to decide to have a committee, a standing committee for personnel. And that would give this board, as a whole, an opportunity to participate. And whoever from staff would come, they could provide us with all this information. We have a whole, we could review staffing over an entire year and see what we want to do with it or know what we have. And then we can't say we don't really know where we're spending our money, and we can answer questions. And that would be the same thing with programs. So why couldn't we create a committee? The committee could come up with an agenda. Certain departments would be requested to provide that information to us, and we could review it as a board. And I think that would help. Maybe we can have some of the uh, residents participate on the committee so everybody has an idea about what is involved to produce everything we do here. And it will be the same for programs. Well, in terms of tasks, those are in the job descriptions. Every, every, every job No, no, job it's not a job description. Doesn't... It's to say this employee got paid $25,000 last year. What were her accomplishments? Everything she did would be included. I mean, isn't that how you evaluate your staff? Don't you know what their accomplishments were and all Can that? Can I ask a question? What about, would this somehow fall into that privacy thing that we have, like no. sometime in our thing, if no. you're putting names for it? No. It's we can't put names. You're just saying this particular person does this and gets paid this? I'm trying to understand what Public is. staff is um, employees of public institutions. Their salaries are publicized. Uh, I mean, we're just asking to have a discussion to explain all the different tasks. We need to figure out why our payroll is what it is, and this would be able to justify 30-some part-time people in patron services who um, I think... Their role is accumulating books and whatever for deliveries. 
I mean, that would give us an idea. Actually, there are some things going on in this library. I'd love to recommend changes, but I can't do that if I can't see what we're doing to bring it to your attention. This isn't, this isn't a witch hunt. This isn't the fire people, but I believe there's a lot of ways to do what we're doing, and it could be a lot more efficient, and then your staff could do things they enjoy doing. It's never, it's never been about a witch hunt. For four years, this is all I wanted to spend time on. And well, you well, refused Kelly, to the program. I, I, earlier in the meeting today, I thought you were, you wanted to talk about programs and how much programs. No, I'm about. saying I expected Susan Lemke to provide us with details about every single event we have in this library. I think we should know that. You're, you're looking at it as additional work for her. So I'm, I'm kind of mortified because I guess when you come from accounting and finance, this, everybody gives you this information. It's just automatically expected, and it's, it's something we receive. It's been a battle for me to get information this, from this library for years. They've come up with every reason underneath well, right, the sun. Right, do so I don't want to belabor their jobs. Let's formulate a committee, and different departments will have ample time to provide the information, and we could review it that way. And now we as a board will be able to justify our salaries and our programs. Well, all right, but it, it, I, I, I hear you, you know, sort of jumping from one topic to another as to what you want information on. Two yeah. topics, staffing, mm -hmm. second topic, programs. Mm -hmm. I'd like to have a standing committee. We used to have them. Um, I, there may have been one for personnel or something like personnel, but I'd like to see one for programs as well. How else could we learn about our library if not with the committee? So that was my thought, because nothing else seems to work. Hmm. Um, all right, I'm going to take this into consideration and talk to perhaps some other individuals to see if there's other individuals who have interest in being on the personnel committee and see what... How many we, people do we need on a committee? We only need two, right? Um, typically, a committee has been three, but I, um, I don't know. I we'll, thought I read two. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a board. I mean, those are board members. I mean, a committee doesn't only have to be board members, right? Does. No, I thought committees were formed with staff as well. Uh, no, I don't. And patrons, we've never had, uh, we've never had committees where we had residents' yeah. participation? Mm -hmm. Pardon uh, me? The village has residents' Yes, they do. That's right. That's where I got that from. So why couldn't we mirror them? Because you know what? It is important that we reach out to the residents. You're supposed to be part well, of our know, process. Certainly we did that during the strategic uh, uh, process. No, on a committee. It's more, we, it's we more long-standing. We involved as many people as we could throughout the committee. Well, throughout you know what? Unfortunately, it didn't seem to work for the residents, but a committee is long-standing. Oh, the dates didn't. We had hardly anyone there. Hardly any residents showed up. But I mean, not to get off the subject. Um, that's true. That is where I did uh, learn about those committees because I did contact the village. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, I would like to see us create two committees, one for personnel and one for programming and events. My only, I'm not criticizing your idea. If you feel that way, that's fine. Oh, I never feel that way. I'm just, I'm just, my just concern here is legality. And as long as we do it in such a way that there are no legal issues. Okay. But Sounds good. Okay. But I, I think I, we're fine. That's my only concern. Yeah. I think we're fine. We're just talking about the um, library and how it functions. We're not getting the personnel account that I just. As long as there's no legality issues. Okay, great. Okay, all right. Um, I think this is something we probably want to give Tim Spadoni a uh, chance to weigh in too. Yes. Because he's not here this evening. Um, but I think that is all that we have on our agenda this evening and all that was mentioned to me during the meeting that people wanted to talk about this evening. So, uh, unless I hear anything further, I'm going to ask for a motion to motion. adjourn. I have a motion. Second. Okay, I need a second. Um, make a roll call. Hey, Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Thank you, everyone.